Alrighty guys, welcome to my season 14 Ari guide. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to play Ari like a literal pro. I've been playing her since she was released back in 2011, and she has consistently been one of my absolute favorite champions to 1v9 and carry rank games with. There will be timestamps in the description of every single mid lane matchup, so feel free to check them out during your champion select and loading screens. So first things first, why should you main Ari? Ari is an exceptionally strong champion in every single game, and to be honest, it would be so much easier to list why you shouldn't play her. She has some of the best wave clear in the game. She is incredibly safe to play. She has three to eight nonstop dashes. She's ranged, she has amazing sustain, low mana costs on her abilities, and she is one of the only mages in the game that has an actual engage for her team. She can play backline like a normal mage, or you can have equal success playing her like an assassin, flying into the enemy team and one-shotting high priority carries. She is incredibly strong to add to your mid lane champion pool, and she's arguably very easy to master. Basically, she's carefree, fun to play, dashes around murdering enemies, and uh, she one-shots minion waves. So what's not to like? Alrighty guys, and now I'm gonna be going over each of Ari's abilities and the way that I see them. Instead of just reading them off, I feel like it could be easier to explain if I just tell you. So essentially, your passive is just health uh, sustain. Whenever you kill a minion or a monster, like a jungle camp, you stack up just a little bit. And I can show you guys right here. Um, we have one stack of Essence Fragment, or Essence th Theft. Once we get up to nine of them, it'll give us a nice little heal of 238. That stacks, uh, that scales with level and AP. But you get, you get a little bit of a heal, that's all. And then when you kill an enemy champion, or you do damage within three seconds of them, you get a bigger heal because it's, you know, more reward for killing a champion. Your Q is going to be your bread and butter skill shot. You throw it out, you know, it comes back to you. It has two damages, one going out, one going in. So you can see right here, it's magic on the way out, true damage on the way in, same amount of damage. Uh, what you wanna do is try to max range it in lane. So like right here, it'd be like, oh, we run up that way. It's really hard for them to dodge your Q. So if I was like pretty close to the enemy champion, then I throw it, like they could just very easily run to the left, run to the, le the right, um, if that happened. So that is your Q, very simple. It's wave clear, it's poke, it's good damage. Yeah, that's it. Uh, next up, we have your W. It gives you a burst of movement speed. So you can see we go from 405 to 508 and we go back down over time. So when you're in lane, you recall, et cetera, et cetera, you're gonna wanna be using your W to uh, run back to lane just to get back to the fights, get some more minions, miss, miss less. It costs pretty much no mana, so good to do. But more than that, it is three little fox fires, these three little things, and they each are like targeted missiles. Um, and they do have a priority sequence. So if you auto attack, if you're auto attacking something, it'll focus that, which will lead into a combo we'll talk about later. But on top of that, on top of the movement speed, it also has a really cool thing that no one really knows. If you press shift on it, you actually do 200% uh, damage to minions that are below 20% health. So if you were to queue a minion wave, get them below to pass that 20%, your W can pretty much kill the back line or the front line uh, equally. It'll just execute them all. So that's always good. Next up, we have the charm. This is what makes Ari so cool in my opinion. You have that beautiful charm, well actually everything. Her ult is probably the best part, so I'm, I'm not gonna get that twisted. Anyways, your charm is a skill shot. The speed is decent. It's not really too difficult to dodge it from a long distance. Like you've got a full second to turn away, I'd say. But it is very, very good for sieging. So you've got enemies under the turret and they're just trying to clear waves out. You just keep throwing them out until they land and then you throw them out and you follow it up and you can even like, I mean, you can see the damage we do on this. Like that's 3,500 damage late game. 80 carry goes bye-bye, you know? <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, your charm is a linear skill shot. Charms them for two seconds. It's very good for pairing up with um, all your other abilities. Normally, 
you'd want to be looking for a charm Q. Uh, but we're, we're going to go over the combos mechanics right after this section anyways. So your ultimate is Spirit Rush. This is actually the best part about Hari. It's just like your W, but instead of giving you movement speed, it will shoot out three bolts instantly towards a uh, enemy champion. It'll prioritize champions as well. And what happens is it does a lot of damage. Every time you use it, you get a dash. And on top of that, if you kill enemy champion, you see this little, this little three stack thing? Every time you kill a champion, you get one more stack and you can keep on dashing and keep on dashing. It means that Ari can make literal montage plays happen without even having to try. Like you can just fly in, you kill one person, then you continue flying and it's just, it's a really good time. That's pretty much it. Now we're gonna talk about different combos and mechanics uh, for this beautiful, beautiful champion. There's not too many, so let's just get right into it. We'll start off with the Q. Your Q has a few different uses. We'll start from like early on in the lane, more practical. Usually say that this is the enemy champion and this is a minion they're farming. You have to you have to lock yourself in an auto attack animation. So while the enemy champion is auto attacking a minion, you can try to snipe them with a max distance Q. That means that you're going to hit them on the tip, which is impossible for them to dodge and it'll do a lot of damage, the magic and the true damage if it lands. Uh, it's a really good way to poke them out and then if you can follow it up with an auto, um, that would be great, but don't even worry about that, honestly. Uh, next thing for your Q would be the fog of war angle. Say, you know, say you're pretending to recall or they just wanna shove the wave in really quick. You can actually go in for a insane burst combo um, this EQ combo will do like 30% of any mid laner's health around the early mid game. Uh, and then it can also very easily lead into you, uh, picking up a kill. Very, very strong combo to catch out the enemies. Uh, on top of that, for your Q, there are a few different ways to make sure that you don't miss the important part. The second part of it, the true damage, is key. Uh, you know, you're not going to hit your point blank Q all the time in team fights like it's just it's difficult you can try but uh well you will be able to hit the Q point blank part rather so like you know you get the part that comes out it's a bit easier but if you're throwing this out at the enemy champion they're probably going to move away say they are this guy right here this is the enemy champion and you throw your Q out and they start moving down well so now this is where they'll end up being you can use your W to get them on the back end as well not only that, but say, okay, say you miss the enemy champion, you can just use your ult behind them, or even better than that, you can actually use your Q and then literally ult right behind them. Q, crazy, crazy burst, crazy potential on this. Um, next up, we will talk about this very, very, very important combo. This is going to be your best in lane combo, uh, level one against any melee champion or short range mage. So you're gonna be using your auto, W auto. Auto is going to be used, obviously does damage, but it also will give your W a main priority, even if there's a bunch of minions. So you auto, W auto, and that's gonna proc electrocute. You're also gonna be getting a, you're also still gonna have a burst of your movement speed to run away afterwards taking minimal, if not no minion damage whatsoever. Very, very good for trading anywhere from level one, like literally any point level one beyond. Um, so that is going to be your W. Um, another thing you could do as well, same exact concept. If your flash and your ult are down, you can use your W to catch up to anyone. Um, it should be used very liberally. Your W, um, you want to be spamming it whenever there's a situation you think the movement speed could help you. Um, it has a very short cooldown. So yeah, definitely. Uh, another thing you could do is go, we're gonna move on to the charm rather, but your charm has a lot of value if you land it because obviously it leads into so much damage. Your charm does 600 damage. Don't get me wrong, that's crazy. But then you add in the fact that you can land your Q, auto, W, you have Lich Bane, like all these things, you can ult. 
Charm is incredibly important. This is the one ability you want to hit if there was anything to prioritize. Um, because, you know, if you hit it, then everything else will hit. Uh, so with that in mind, there are a few ways to guarantee it. What you can do is bur like just bum rush them. You can use your W movement speed, your ult, and then you can press E on top of them. That is an option right there. Another thing you can do is say, you know, you don't want to ult or you, you think they're going to flash if you ult. You can actually just do an E flash and you can actually E then flash, I think at a different few points. So you press E, it's got a, it's got maybe a quarter second of an animation. So you can see like, so you can see like I'll be spamming and it does stop you for a quarter second. So you can, I think you actually want to wait like maybe a 20th of a second before you press E because you can E flash or you can E flash. You know what I mean? Like, so you could, you definitely want to give it like a little bit of time. This is something I would recommend practicing in practice tool, it, just to give you that little bit of extra pick on them. Uh, oh, I missed that one, but. So yeah, I think it's worth it practicing a practice tool, but if you're anything lower than like Emerald, I don't think they're gonna be flashing. If you, if you do that, that's probably still gonna, yeah. But yeah, one thing to note is you do wanna give it a little time. If you, uh, you do wanna give it a little bit of time. So, a little bit of time. Anyways, um, that is going to be it, I think. We've, we've covered the fact that you can Q redirect with your ult. You can also obviously Q and then redirect with flash. Um, what you want to do is definitely wait until the last millisecond to give them less t time to dodge it. Just to really ensure your best odds of doing the most damage. Um, and that's going to be it for combos and mechanics, I believe. So. I suppose we'll move on to the next section. Alrighty guys, and now we're gonna be going into the different rune pages that Ari might use. Essentially, there's one main one that I would recommend using 100% of the time, I just would. But if you wanna test out something a little bit different, there is a Korean build that is similar to this, but a little bit different. So let's just go over it really quick. So Electrocute is amazing on Ari because even from level one, auto W auto will proc Electrocute, very good poke. Meanwhile, you have Taste of Blood, so you heal while you trade, making the trade even stronger. Um, you could go for Sudden Impact if you think that you're going to absolutely stop. I mean, you get a lot, a lot of magic pen from it, but for the sake of simplicity and scaling, into that mid and late game monster. Taste of Blood is going to be a lot more guaranteed. You have a lot less kill pressure um, than assassins do in the very early game. So for that reason, I'd say Taste of Blood is just more consistently good. Eyeball Collection is going to be necessary for just stacking up and getting more damage. Ultimate Hunter is the superior rune in the Hunters. Don't get anything else, trust me. It's just ultimate hunter cooldown reduction on your ultimate is, is key. Uh, past that, Transcendence is going to give us ability haste and going to be giving you, um, reduces the remaining cooldown of basic abilities on champion takedown. Ari is looking to reset and that paired with ultimate hunter and malignance is going to mean that your cooldowns are going to be essentially non-existent. Mana flow is going to give you extra mana just so that when you don't have your completed item, your complete malignance, you will be able to have some form of extra mana, and then by the time you have malignance, you'll get that missing mana restore. And it's just, it's a very strong item on Ari, and just any mage in general. Uh, attack speed on the top rune, this makes it so you can auto W auto a lot cleaner. This will mean that Lich Bane procs will come out much cleaner, and comparatively to nine adaptive force, this will be a huge quality of life improvement versus a little bit more AP. This is a no brainer. You don't need movement speed. You don't need extra health. And this one would be almost always health scaling. But if they do have a lot, a lot, a lot of stuns and roots and charms, you can get tenacity and that would be perfectly good slash acceptable. Now, that's going to be it essentially for the runes. 
However, there is a interesting few, few extra secondaries. So triple tonic and biscuit delivery is the highest tier in Korea only. Triple tonic is a fun mix up. And while I'm not too familiar with the rune, I know that a lot of Koreans love to use it. So I would recommend investigating this strategy yourself with these exact runes, everything else being exactly the same. Other than that, there is the option to go for a Comet build. However, I have found that going for Scorch um, is not nearly as useful as going for the Ultimate Hunter. And Electrocute is going to give you that damage when you need it the most, rather than a little bit of poke. Ari does have her Q for poke, but you're not using it as consistently as a Lux would. Therefore, it is less value overall. But back to the basics, um, these are the runes I recommend you use. These are the runes I recommend you use every single game until you're advised otherwise. Um, as for your summoner spells, I think that the only ones I would ever really take are Flash Teleport or Flash Ignite. You could run Flash Exhaust against a assassin or multiple assassins. However, I think you just want to go Flash Teleport. Know how much rain, how much damage the assassin you're playing against has and then recall accordingly, use teleport, use your mechanics to not lose lanes so badly to the point that you feel like you need exhaust because flash teleport is key. Flash ignite if you feel a little frisky, but I would recommend running flash teleport every single game until you're incredibly comfortable with the champion uh, herself. Alrighty guys, and now we're gonna be going into all of the different items for Ari. This is important to note, not every build will still be the most OP, depending on the patch, but we're gonna be going off of basic knowledge and I guess a general like minorly advanced understanding of the game. So let's just go straight into this. So keeping in mind that your ultimate is going to be the most important thing in the game for roaming, for going for any form of gank, your ultimate is what makes Ari overpowered. She's a very strong champion with your ultimate. Uh, and this is why you run ultimate hunter in the runes. With that in mind, there's something to talk about. Ludin's companion is an item that I think any newbie Ari would think to build, right? You know, you, you get it and you, it gives you wave clear, it's damage. It's, it's all the good stats you'd want, right? However, there is a thing as too much mana Items that give Lost Chapter, um, unless you're playing a champion like Rise that scales with mana, you don't really want more than one Lost Chapter item. And simply put, in Season 14, Malignance is better. It is the same thing, but instead of a little bit of wave clear, a little bit extra damage, it gives you ultimate ability haste, and your ultimate will deal damage just like the alter, just like the other item, the companion, but it also reduces their magic resist by 10. This is honestly an incredible, incredible item. It is so, so, so useful for Ari. Um, and I mean, our ultimate, we're gonna give ourselves a, I guess you could say like a standard type of build, and we're gonna see what our ultimate cooldown is with Malignant really really quickly and keep in mind my runes aren't even stacked up so i guess we'll just i don't know the builds will vary and we'll talk about that but um let's put this right there so our ultimate cooldown is only 45 seconds and if there is a way to stack up the runes we will quickly just show that off um but long story short fully stacked runes so yeah 39 second cooldown is crazy it's amazing um so yeah we're gonna talk about it from level one to beyond. So first things first, Doran's Ring, you're rushing. You're getting this every time. Doran's Ring and uh, two health potions, it is what you're gonna want no matter what. If you go Ignite, if you go Teleport, doesn't matter. You want Doran's. It's the best item for, uh, for Ari. Anyways, past that, you're gonna wanna rush a Malignance every single time. It is truly 
Ari's new bread and butter. Shout out to Riot for giving us this item in season 14. Uh, the next thing you'd want to be going for is going to be either Ionian Boots of Lucidity or you're going to want to going for Sorcerer Shoes. The way I see it is they're both really good for different reasons. I think personally, if you have more than one magic damage dealer and they're likely to build MR, I think getting Sorcerer Boots could be a good reason, a good thing to do. I also think that if you are going against a tank and you're just going to be wave clearing all game and then roaming, you know, I think Ionian Boots could be better because it's going to give you more cooldown reduction for your ultimate, more charms for roaming. There is no best option. I recommend that you play games with both of these and see which one you like the most. I prefer Sorcerer Boots, so it's what I'll tell you guys to go for but I also recognize that Ionian Boots are amazing on Ari as well. Next thing is going to be a Lich Bane. This item is amazing for Ari because you can pretty much just ult Rock Lich Bane, wait a second, then you can ult again. You know, same thing, I, I have my cooldown reduction uh, on, so we're gonna go ahead and do, turn that off really quick. But you can see, Rock that, wait a second, Charm, Ari is very much a slow and steady destruction type champion, like, you use your stuff. This is kind of the pace in which Ari wants to play, if she's not going like full balls to the walls, like, psychopath strategy, all assassin mode, most of the time you will be playing a bit slower. Um, so yeah, that is Lich Bane's amazing item, the Spellblade is great, the stats are amazing, 100 ability power, since much better than last season, 8% movement speed, great deal. Um, on top of that, what I would recommend to you, if you are doing well, if you are snowballing, you're playing well, Shadow Flame is an amazing next item. Ideally, you break even on Ari, or you um, are winning. If that is the case, and they have a pretty balanced enemy team comp, they don't have, you know, they don't have a 10 and 0 Zed, for example, that's been roaming a lot. They they, they have like a normal team comp. You, uh, you'd want to just go for Shadow Flame and really give yourself an amazing chance to destroy enemies with 120 AP, 12 Magic Pen, and Magical Crit. Very, very strong, strong item. Ari has a ton of mobility, and as long as you don't play like a fool, wasting it, you know, say you, you want to go in for an engage, um then you, I mean, you still have, as long as you have your flash or as long as you have one ult left, you can even consider going really deep into the enemy team and then knowing you can just ult right back out. What I'm trying to say is, if you know your limits, Ari is exceptionally forgiving with um, not dying because of your three dashes plus resets. You have to be a little bit patient when to go and like wait for your time to strike. So yeah, that is what I would recommend to you. This is a really good starter build. Um, if you're doing anywhere decent, getting a dark seal before, or e even as early as getting a dark seal, say you recall with like a, like a thousand or 1100, like 900 gold, you go back, you get amp tome, you get dark seal, even getting it in your first back is very, very, very useful. Ari does snowball. She can shove wave. She can solo kill mid. She can roam very well into top bot enemy jungle. Dark Seal, amazing item, highly recommend it. Um, so moving on past that, we will continue on to the next item. This is where things get a lot more complicated, exponentially more complicated. Now you're at a crossroads between Zonias, Rabadons, Banshees, uh, oops, I'm getting my malignants back. Um, yes, Zonias, Rabadons, Malignants, or sorry, uh, Banshees, Void, there's a lot of different options. This is where you have to start making some decisions for yourself between the following items. You could go Zonias, you can go Crypt Bloom, you can go Rapidons. Um, I don't think, you, you never want Lyandries, you'd want uh, Void Staff, Banshees. So if the enemy team has a Zed, if the enemy team has three AD that are doing well, Maybe even two if one of them is exceptionally fed. Zonia's is an amazing item 
because it now gives you the ability to play like Malphite, where you can literally do that and then stall for your team. You can be this crazy engage champion and then stall. That is a very strong thing in a team fight. Very, very strong. Not to mention 128 AP, 50 armor. The stats have been buffed in the new season. Very good item. Um, I also like this item in general if you have a Dark Seal or eventually a Magi's that is stacked up because it gives you more protection on not losing your stacks or if you have a bounty, you wanna keep it up. In general, if there was one build that I would say you can just run this every single game, even if they just don't have, you know, even if they only have one AD, it would be a build just like this. And then I would eventually, if they got MR, I would sell, um, I would probably sell Shadow Flame for a Void Staff. And I think this is a really, really strong build. So obviously we are at that crossroads where we've got our core build and we don't know what to do. Um, say, say you don't want Azonias. Banshees, if they have enemy Vigar, Nidalee Jungle, Malphite Top. They have a lot of AP. Banshees, amazing item. 50 MR now. Spell shield on a 30 second cooldown. Been huge, hugely buffed since last season. Um, and then obviously from there, you'd continue on getting your Rabadons, selling Shadow Flame for a Void Staff as you are in the late game. Um, and this is a complete build here. This is a complete build. Another thing you could do instead of getting a Void Staff as your fifth or sixth item, depending on how much MR they have, if they have a bunch of MR, you would want to get a um, you would want to get a earlier Void Staff, probably like you know right about now. I would say you'd want to get a Void Staff, but if you don't want to get a Void Staff, if you think that Crypt Bloom is better. There is a debate on it. It's 70 AP, 30% magic pen versus 80 AP, 40 magic pen, but you can get a nice healing Nova. This is good for team fights. I am a firm believer in solo queue. You play for yourself. You do not play to heal the enemy team as a carry. I disagree with the item, but that is just my personal decision. And I would say that eventually you want to get to this kind of build one way or another. Uh, some items I don't recommend getting, Luden's Companion. We talked about it already, too much mana if you're going to be getting Malignants and you always want to get Malignants. On top of that, Storm Surge. This is an amazing item and you could argue that it's good, really, really good on Ari. However, I don't think that it is better than any of the other items for Ari. I think Storm Surge is an amazing, amazing item for Ari, but other items are better. If you really wanted to build this item, you could replace Lich Bane with it. Uh, if you want to play more of this, like, you know, this, like, this, like, crazy one shot build, you could definitely do it. You could, 100%. Uh, it's just, I personally think that most of the time Lich Bane is going to be better as of now. However, it is currently March 10th as of me recording this, and I feel like Lich Bane will probably get nerfed. So I would say there really is no clear winner because it just depends on the time of the season, which one's more OP right now. Um, so if you like Storm Surge, I would say actually go for it. I love Storm Surge and I'll probably build, build it versus Lich Bane sometimes, but I do recognize that as it stands currently, Lich Bane is better. On top of that, uh, items you wouldn't want to build, Lyandries. I would say you could do it if they had only tanks. If they had a Malphite tank top, if they had a Galio mid, if they had a Xin Zhao full tank jungle, but then they had a Vayne or a Kogma or any AD carry bot, I would just focus on uh, getting up into the bot lane and, uh, you know, giving him the good old. 
giving him the good old one shot. Um, and then looking to split push with um, split push with your incredible, incredible damage. Lich Bane plus a lot of AP equals a really good time onto turrets. Um, but yeah, so that is going to be my suggestion for that. On top of that, um, Magi's is always going to be amazing. Morella Nomicon, honestly, you should never be building it. Um, it is not your job as the mid laner to be getting anti-heal. It is the support or the jungler's problem. Uh, maybe the AD carry if they aren't doing too well, but that's also a waste of gold for them. However, this is League of Legends, and you're going to have a lot of horrible teammates. If they have a Silas mid or a Vlad mid, a Silas jungle or a Xin Zhao jungle or Fiddle Warwick heal, basically, if they have like four healers, like Soraka, Silas, Fiddle, War, like if they have a bunch of healing, Aatrox, just do it. Just get an Oblivion Orb and then sell it later into the game, or you can completely replace out your Zonias with the Morellos if you feel like it is worth it. However, you should ask your support or your AD or your jungle to get anti-heal so that you're not wasting gold on it. Um, other than that, I mean, Rylai's is, it's decent, but considering how we've talked about in this guide, how you can literally, instead of slowing the enemies, why not just like, why not just like, like ult in and E them? Or instead of just like, if you're gonna miss it, you can just like redirect it. Uh, 75 AP, 400 health. This is uh, 30 more AP. This is 8% movement speed for roaming and being and being a problem for the enemy team. And it's 400 damage every time you auto attack. So yeah, uncomparable. Rally's is okay, but not worth it. Rocket belt. Um, we already have the dashes. There's too many good items for Ari because she's a mana champion. Um, you know, if she didn't have mana, I think all I'd be all for it. Like, <laughs> but she has mana, so it's uh, it's not the move. Uh, Horizon focus, absolutely not. Um, Archangels, it's just not worth it. You don't you don't play Ari to build a bunch of mana and then have a shield. Like you play Ari to jump in, become a problem. Like. You, you're not playing a battle mage. If you want to play a battle mage, play Cassidan or Galia or something. Um, but yeah, we're not we're not trying to be this tanky mage. We're trying to be useful to the team. Let's just leave it at that. I, I know. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, Nash's Tooth. Um, I'd only build it if. I mean, you could build it, and you could split push. This is something I would only do if my team was so hopeless. That I didn't think I could 1v5 team fights and I knew that they would be useless all the time, then like, yeah, you could definitely build a Nashus Tooth and like split push. Ari does have pretty good autos. Um, with Lich Bane, especially, you can destroy turrets. That is the only time. Essentially, you guys should never build it, but yeah, that is the circumstance I would. Um, Cosmic Drive. It's just not worth it, unfortunately. It's a great item. Uh, it's just one of those things where they're, they're just better items. Uh, Rift Maker, just don't. Um, it's just not good. It's it's just not worth it. It looks like it'd be really good, but once again, other items fit the purpose better, and you don't want to wait five seconds to be at your maximum potential, and you don't want to be spending gold on a passive that gives you AP based off of your bonus health. Because considering we have literally zero bonus health, you can understand why. Uh, Rod of Ages, you're not playing a battle mage. I think that's that's pretty much it, right? So that's going to be it for the items. Alrighty, guys, we are going into an educational commentary on Ari. We're playing in mid plat, and we are going against a Katarina. So as we've mentioned in the mechanics section. Auto W Auto is going to proc that electrocute very easily. And then we don't want to go too far forward otherwise. We're going to hit W and both minions at the same time. Uh, hit over the W and minions. So, yeah, we want to get close to the minions, by the way. If you can ever do this, it'll save you time from your auto attack having to travel if you're a ranged champion. 
And right now we do have mana flow we can proc, so. That is the tip. So that is W plus auto plus Q. And that is going to be immense damage. Almost the tip, but that's fine. We practice playing aggressive. Zach is their jungler. And what we want to do is try to hit her on the tip of this. Right there, when she's trying to get that minion. Oof, I did not mean to do that. And we are just going to try to shove this really quick. Chug a potion as well. Now, if she tries to mess, she'll die. Oh, if that hits, that was so... There it is, electrocute. Kind of figured we could just do that. Alright, we are going to have to back up. A bit aggro taking two turret shots, but it works out just fine. She is going to get most of the wave, unfortunately, because it's in a horrible spot. But considering Zach could easily show up, it's not worth the risk. So we're going to go ahead and pick up... Oops, TV back. We're going to go ahead and pick up these items here for the Malignant's first item. And the runes are Electrocute, Taste of Blood, Eyeball, Ultimate Hunter, Mana Flow, Transcendence. Very standard stuff, honestly, so. Try and push this. Mana Flow procced. That is going to be a wave reset. It's going to shove into the turret, and it should be completely good. We're going to go ahead and drop a ward. Okay. We know that there's a vision plant, so we can maybe use it to clear out her wards in a second. For now, we want to just be careful. She used W. Smart. Okay. Just playing to win lane here. It's going to push either way, so I'm just going to press Q to get these minions. Just looking for a charm. Using a potion immediately. And we are completely good. We healed up. Uh, she doesn't have Ignite either. We have another potion chugging, so we should be completely safe here. No Electrocute. Not up, actually. That's fine. Hit her on the, on the front end. We will have our ult up soon. We want to actually get the wave to be frozen right outside turret, but it looks like it'll do it either way. We would ideally like to be six for this fight that this, that's about to happen at Dragon. So we're going to start shoving. Okay, now we can rotate a little bit late, but better late than never, potentially. Just kidding. Katarina got a double kill. Yeah, I could have roamed sooner. Then again, didn't need to die either. Okay. I think two autos on this one are out. I'm just going to recall right out of vision so she won't reset, press E, and then Q me. Double kills rough. But at the end of the day, we actually are still like slightly ahead. We're ahead in experience and a gold. So you can see she has a noon quiver. 1300. Actually, she might have a treasure hunter, which is really good for snowballing. But I think we'll be okay. As long as my team doesn't consistently get ganked and die.
Another stack is available for the farming. That is amazing. Bot lane's there, so we should be very safe to do this. Wow, I didn't miss that. Yikes. Okay, all good. That'll do. We are up 30 CS. We're very happy about this. And the Lignant is starting to get closer. We're seven and a half, and I think she just hit six. So, as sad as it is that she's roaming, it's not a big deal. Uh, but yeah, we ult in, and saving charm as a defensive tool right when it came back up. Um, and on that first initial ult reset, we just ult right out. We're not looking to greed a kill. When our team has the kill ready, like, we'll let them just take it. I need them to recall. They need to go back right now. I'm going to start spamping them. Katarina's very clearly bought. You have to think in the mind of a Katarina. Enemy bot lane is shoved in. You roam it. You roam to it. Every time. Nice. Able to get that. We do have ult. We have W, ult. We have everything up. I'm not afraid to auto attack her a bunch. I'm not afraid to dive her either. Amazing. Okay, we keep getting plates then. Um, we're completely fine. Just gonna use a potion either way. Yep, and if there's nothing for her, the Zac to Q and then auto, we are completely safe. Uh, we do want to shove this wave and leave immediately, though. Okay. Just going to get ready to execute these ones. And then run away. We will run all the way back because we know Academy's going to try and stop our recall. She's a very aggressive player. Yep, there she is. And nothing really to get here. I mean, we got the malignants. So don't need don't need a control word or anything like that. We are very happy with what we have so far. 77 203, very clean game. Um, don't know what this Hecarim is doing, inting my uh, mid laner, but all good. We uh, we get double buffs out of it, thankfully. If that charm missed, we were in trouble. But yeah, Hecarim is uh, very confused, clearly. <laughs> beauty and we know Hecarim's, or Zac is on the top side. So we're going to hover at the bottom, just so if we see him E, it'll take longer for him to get to us. Better chance of dodging it. We do have ults available. We're definitely fine to stay here. Ooh, good spacing on her. Wait, what? I'm so confused my ult didn't do damage to her. Huh. Yikes. That sucks. And I wonder if it had anything to do with um, getting that 450 gold to get, yeah, that's sad. Okay. We'll go Lich Bane now. Um, just gonna tell him to go away pretty much. told him to go away. Um, yeah, this guy's gonna ruin the game, I think. If we, if we don't tell him to go away. Okay, ult up soon. Hmm. 
Malachi Rome, they'd be happy about that. Ooh, okay. Santa got me with the ult. Um, they do... Uh, okay. Never mind, it's fine. Just leave it. I can... Yeah, Imaka had a chance to take it, but he didn't see it, and then by the time he realized, it was too late. I kind of don't have that much time to waste. But, all good. We have 45 CS on the Katarina. I think fortunately it looks like Yasuo did show up eventually. So five out of six, that is plenty. We do have ult available as well. We are gonna go for the turret. If she tries to E me, then we will just chunk her out. We do have to wait for our charm to come back up, though. An enemy has been slain. Okay, is there a plant available? Not that I see. Oh, it's on a ward. Yeah, we really want to focus this mid turret just so we can move on towards roaming bot and all that. I won't forget what it means. Oof. Yeah, she just has a bit of gold off of our team. That's fine though. Almost got her. Still in the lead. If we take red buff, that'd be huge. Red buff on Ari is amazing. It's the same reason why you get attack speed runes and Lich Bane. You are weaving a lot of auto attacks. Oh god. Did not mean to get those to hit me. Hmm. Should be okay here. Okay. We don't have TP up just yet, so we will just be hanging out, looking for a plant. Once again, we don't know where Katarina is. We do have ult though, and flash. We don't know where Kat is though. Oof, oof, oof. Damn, she is so strong. I shouldn't have been that far forward. That was my bad. Luckily, it's okay. Ooh, maybe. Okay, we're gonna TP back to mid. We just wanna keep... We just wanna keep a lead. And the best way to do that is to just keep farming, keep shoving and roaming. And we're not at the point where Baron's up, so it's not too necessary that we hold TP for this crucial situation. Like right here, I don't have ult for 10 seconds, and this is this is a far away fight. This is a guaranteed mid turret if I just stay at it, because we have five touch of the voids. And good attack speed and high AP. Keep it going, keep it going. Almost him to a minute. And if we get the second turret, that would be amazing. Ooh, got the flash. That is a lot of stuff there, huh? Four, three, three. One, two. One, three. 
Yeah. Yeah, Katarina does really well with snowballing. So that dragon fight early and then Hecarim just running it down, giving her that bounty, gives her a lot of damage. Unfortunately. Okay, we're good. Yeah. Good news, we have a Lich Bane now, so. I believe we will just build this item and continue on to the next thing. So we've almost taken three turrets and you can see Katarina's done about well, you know, it looks like she's done about 10% of this one's damage. That's singular. I think we are doing just fine. Um, we're going to go ahead and continue back. I'm not done with mid lane yet. Because we just need to proc Lich Bane once on this. Unfortunately, until there's a dragon fight, we will be a little bit stuck. But this looks like a good enough time to get a free bounty off of Senna. Wow, we absolutely obliterated her. That was that was crazy. Oh my god. And yeah, we just have to keep running, unfortunately, because I saw Katarina's coming to us. We have a lot of movement speed, though. Luckily, yeah, land the charm. We need to. Yeah, we actually one shot her. It was uh, it was ridiculous. Okay. Pressing W. Next goal will definitely be taking this turret. The funny thing is, Ari is like so exceptionally strong at so many different things. She can be an assassin, a control mage. She also is an amazing split pusher. She just mercs towers. She has amazing mobility, dive potential against the so solos. So we've taken three turrets almost. We're about to take a fourth one. Be careful here. Yeah, Katarina is just looking to int me, I think, which I really appreciate. It's really kind of her. Oops. Okay. Proc some Lich Banes. And even if we auto attack and then use an ability, after the auto's already in the air. As long as we use an ability before our auto lands, it'll still proc that Lich Bane, which is amazing. And yes, you can see the build's just leading. We're up 70 CS, we're up a kill. We're up one, two, almost three, four turrets. This is amazing versus champion, even like Katarina, who dodges skill shots, as long as you wait for her to use her E, you just E right on top of her, because she has to jump right on top of you. The problem is when Ari's try to predict, or just try to make do a, a max range E, just let her come to you. I have no interest in using any abilities in case I really shows up. Uh, we are going to roam though. Unless they, uh... Got that one. There we go. Good bait. Able to win a legit 4v5 right that. And we have plenty of damage to take this thing.
Absolutely amazing. Whew, I will say we barely got out of that. Had to flash ult immediately, but that will do. Um, next item we want to get... You know what? We are doing well enough. Are we? It's tricky, but we are going to go for Magi's here. Magi's, because we're ahead, and then we'll be going for Zonia's to protect that, and because they're all AD. And then we might sell Magi's for Rabadons. We'll see. Depending on how how that works out, that item works out. And his dead top, huh? It's amazing. Every animal for Had to ult, or ult behind her so that the Q would land on the way out. Just to stay confident. She's not going to be able to one shot us immediately. Senna. We have ult in a second. I might look for a quick kill. No, we're not. We, uh, Katarina is respawning in a moment. Okay. Run away. We keep going. Wait for our next W to come back up. And give us the Penta, please. I'd really appreciate that. Dude. You know what? This guy's second kill this entire game was to steal by Penta. Just leave a like. Just, just leave it. Uh, reported. No, I'm just kidding. GG though. See, that was just... That's just how you play Ari. It's so safe. It's so simple. Even when Katarina gets inted by your jungler. Alrighty, guys. We are going into a second game of educational commentary. And because she went E, I felt pretty comfortable. She can't really trade back when I auto W auto. Um... I was turning on the recording, so she got the push on me first, which is not ideal. It's also not the end of the world. I mean, we will miss a minion, but it's fine. As you can see right there, we auto W just to make sure all of the poke on goes under her. I ran into that, so that was my bad. Oof, not quite enough damage, huh? This should be fine. Nine to eight. Eh, all good. Yeah, you usually don't want to let her, let them get the push, but. I mean, that'll do it. We will take that. Yeah, just staying in range. Auto attacking a bunch because we can. At this point, I mean, it's very fair to use your charm here just to get the wave shoved in. Very cool. And we are actually gonna run with her just to make sure she does. This is fine. I mean, I'm just going to TP back. I don't think she actually wanted to do that. Because I have TP. It just seemed like a very much a waste. Let's do this. Wait. 
to TP right now. One more potion just for fun. Nice, perfect timing on the TP. So it should push into me and we should have quite the lead. Tip, huh? Okay. Q is down. Nice poke right there. Um, I actually think I want to try to pull this minion wave, this minion out of the turret. Yeah, this is good. I mean, if she's losing, she's losing so much time. That is a perfect usage of E flash. I don't think she thought my flash was up after that. Uh, after that earlier fight. Wow, that'll take it. That's the tip exactly. That's what she. Perfect. Yeah, CSing hasn't been too clean, but I mean, honestly, the decision making has been pristine. That's all that matters. Yeah, she got to recall a little bit faster. That's, that's exactly what happens. Uh, she was trying to recall, and I was just trying to assist her to get home guards. I didn't want her to have to run all the way back slowly, you know? Slither all the way back, rather. Uh, but okay. So yeah, we don't have flash available. But we do have pretty much three mini flashes with the potential for five resets, so. Okay. And I don't mind running. I don't mind running into the brush because Warwick's not gonna be six. Cassiopeia is not six, so worst case, they both, they're both there in like a one in a million world, but. Yeah, Cassiopeia is a bit tricky to hit with anything because she's ranged. We have to get a little bit luckier with just like hitting a charm like this. But there you go. That's a good Q. Nice. Yeah, we're looking to poke her, but because we have lost Tobe, or lost chapter, it doesn't actually matter if we miss any, uh, because we literally have infinite mana just spamming our Q. Warwick's on his way. That's huge, but I don't think it's good enough, unfortunately. I have Charm in three. I think we're actually fine, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. We uh, charmed her Q, which is her jump on me. So that works perfectly. Oh, Alec, you know, thank you for the tier one. Recording an ultimate RE guide right now. Uh, this is an educational gameplay, so I appreciate you. Shout out to him in the movie or into the guide. So, anyways, um, yeah, so far so good. We're just doing what we gotta do. Um, I could have been a bit more aggressive on the dive. I was a bit unconfident on my damage there. I almost backed up, then I realized, yeah, I actually do a ton of damage with my ult. Oh gosh, there's a. Uh, <laughs> Loud cars are so obnoxious. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and push this really fast. 
Yeah, we're gonna press W. We're also gonna auto attack. We're not gonna. We're not gonna count on our. Let's see. Nice. Got her really good with the poke. We have our ult back up as well. There it is again. She's typing. Typing is OP. Okay, this will do it. And you never know. Just try to throw them out. I have plenty of mana. Looks like it's a bot lane angle. Oh my. Wow. That timing was unbelievable, honestly. That was, um... Huh. That, that timing of her to press W as I press ult was ridiculous, honestly. I got trapped in her W. Yeah, I mean, she does kind of counter us for that reason, but would never have expected that to happen, honestly. Like, ever. It's crazy. I suppose well played, um, but it's very sus. Let's get this all shoved back in. Okay. I suppose we roam now. Yeah, we can win this. That is good. Oh, the slows are gonna make it rough. We're not gonna be able to get anything else there. That is completely okay. We'll drop another ward. Since our dog <laughs> had to run away. That was a good that was a good bait from him though. Yeah, another E flash. <laughs> I'm not I don't wanna say that was a script because that was that was just very insane. I'm so confused. I want to test something. If I throw an ability, does she immediately turn? Like, within a qu within a quarter millisecond? Like, huh. That's fine. No, she's not scripting. Definitely not. Okay, yeah, I'm happy to take plates from her. We're up, uh, we're up almost 30 CS. We're up multiple plates, so. Warwick is going in for a 1v3. showed up just in time for us to not all die. You know what? That's actually good enough. That'll do. Um, Against? Yeah, I think we're going to stick to the same plan. Going to go for the same build this game. Jimmy just get a bit more movement speed early on. Okay. Yeah, we still have a pretty massive lead. And the thing about Warwick... <laughs> He wants me to uh, assist him 1v3. I'd rather not take the bad fight, but that's fine. It worked out because of Rakan. Yeah, this time we're actually going to shove um, before we go. We have level 11 for a rank 2 ult, which is going to be a huge damage increase. That was just free. Have three old still. She just completely went the opposite end of where I thought she'd go. 
actually meant to ult that. Oof. That's fine. Got the ult out. We don't have much health, but we definitely have a chance to... We do have ult coming up. We might actually be able to just pick up a kill here. I saw Rakan use his sweeper. I'm going to assume that Cassiope is just recalling now. Yep. So we're going to go for this before we consider roaming bot or to the dragon. I should roam, but this is also first turret, which is like way more gold than a kill. Oof. I think, I honestly think um, I should have just not gone at all. I wanted to show up later, but then Karma turned around. Yikes. Was it first turret? Oh, you're right. My team died and lost it uh, very early. Did not realize that. You dead. That's okay. Okay. Before. Yeah. I see. The thing is, like, I should. I should definitely be roaming. Just, I'm so tempted to play for myself, but I think that one I should have roamed for sure. Cause it is solo queue and you don't want to like... Uh, Orbic's taking so many outnumbered fights. That's okay. Lucian's also 4 now, which I did not realize. Can't wait to queue. I want to save W for movement speed. Let me see Lucian. He should be easy enough to kill. Okay. I'm assuming there's a ward right there now. There it is. Even though he sidestepped our charm, we wait until the Q is almost about to come back to us, and then we ult right behind him. How sweet. And now there's nothing left to do besides take turret. I'm gonna go sideways in case it's Briar ulting me. Yeah, we just wanna get this turret for free. That's all we're looking for. This is 700 gold, just in the bag. We're gonna block all these minions. Oh. Yeah, 3000 gold. Our gold lead is actually insane on this Cassiopeia. We're going to head back and get another item now. Alright, so we're going to get a Lich Bane. We're going to go for this. And we'll get a Blue Elixir. I kind of like Blue Elixir a lot because of how much we split push on this champion. It's a bit, I guess you could say unnecessary. We could have sold Doran's Ring and we could have just gotten Amp Tome or just held the 500. But I feel like in situations like this, when you get a big power spike, um, getting a blue elixir can really just like nail in the win. So it's it's a personal decision. I don't fully recommend it because of how expensive it is, but I like it. I like the snowball on it, the potential. You're the first channel you swatch at the league. Hey, yeah, it's a dude. Okay.
Okay. GG this mid and jungle or something. Nice. Yeah, we are doing some pretty massive damage to them. Just be careful. That is a lot of damage to the Briar. And I guess you could say it was worth getting the blue elixir. We've definitely got a lot of usage out of it so far. Charm is going to miss, but that's okay. We're just throwing poke out. Let's see if we can get a little bite. You see the extra 25 true damage on each auto. Uh oh. That is uh, very unfortunate to get hit by that root. Ah, my bad. Nice. Oh, ooh. We did not see the Garen there. Warwick has a Triforce. Maybe he can stop it. Oh, man. This is the one Warwick that doesn't have a Tiamat build. This actually might be another situation where we get another blue elixir. I think I'm gonna do it. This is a bit Rambo. Bear with me. All right. Kind of just had to send it. Do Baron. If we're not gonna end the game, we should definitely just do Baron. Even if it's 21 minutes. We got the damage. Nice, everyone gets the red. Ult is up so soon. Malignance is so nice. 52 second cooldown, and we're not even at rank 3 ult. Rank 3 ult would be 39 second cooldown. Uh, I don't care if this wolf's gonna attack me. I wanna pop this plant so they don't know where we're at. That'll do it. Okay. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Ari is an absolute monster champion. This is in platinum, by the way, so it's a pretty... Uh-oh. Goodbye, world. I, I just... <laughs> oh, no. But look, look, look. It's okay, guys. Luckily, Rakan and Warwick decided it wasn't worth saving them. They're going to int too, which is really good. I appreciate that. I'm glad my uh, efforts were in vain. Were the runes? The runes are right here. Electrocute, Taste of Blood, Eyeball, Ultimate Mana Flow Transcendence. This is like the page you could run literally every game. Yeah, we need to go top lane as a group. We can just end the game. And one last, one last blue elixir for me. Thank you, I like your gameplay, I appreciate you. Yeah, Ari is my true bay that I cheat on a Kali with sometimes.
I'm worried Garen's in the brush. I'm just going to stay away from that brush. He is completely in the different lane. All right, we're going to go for a pick right here. I'm literally inting what? Okay, it's fine. We just okay. That was um, I meant to flash. Oh, that was really interesting for me. All good. We actually did back turn that. That was a really late suppression, but it'll do. We went here. Ult's up now. I can't believe that charm missed. Dash. Dash and flash. They need to take the, the, they just need to attack the turret. There you go. They figured it out. Very nice. I believe that is game 14, 6, and 12. Yeah, we could do this all day. This is the second game we played, second game we carried. That's just what Ari does, honestly. GG. Alrighty. That, those were some educational games. I enjoyed that. GG. Alrighty, guys. And now we're going to be going into the champion matchup section of the guide. We're gonna be talking about how to play Ari against every single champion. So let's just get into it. So we are gonna be going against Aatrox, Aatrox mid. This champion is incredibly tanky and being that Ari doesn't have any real tools to deal with that, like health shred, I would recommend going for early poke with your auto W auto and hoping that a jungler ganks. But Knowing that if the jungler isn't there, it's going to be very difficult to kill Aatrox, being that he has such a big health bar and he has healing. And Ari doesn't have any great tools to really destroy Aatrox until 6. What I would recommend is trying to get the Aatrox low at level 5. Uh, if you can take a few good trades, maybe try to predict his Q plus E combo. If you can wither him down a little bit, then at level 6, go for the all-in try to have your support or your jungler uh, help you out with that because he has once again he's just so tanky um, past that you want to save your ultimate to dash sideways when he presses Q you are able to dash more than his dash can redirect his Q and that is going to be your best friend on the first part of his Q past that you can use your ult to dash directly into the Aatrox for his second Q. And then for the third one, you want to dash just outside of the range of his E once again for his third Q. Other than that, um, it's just a matter of shoving the wave. You have superior wave clear, Rome. There you go. Um, next up, we have Akali. This is a very Ari sided matchup until level six and then it is a survival um, against any good akali however it is winnable ari wants to go in for an auto w auto and then run away waiting for her cooldowns to come back up akali wins in long trades that she can get close range into so you don't want to force your auto w auto with poor spacing if anything, you want to auto her, and then if she tries to run up to you, you press W and run back and go for a fadeaway auto W auto. The important thing is to not let a colleague press Q on you early and then let her follow it up. And the other important thing is to not get hit by her E. This coming from a challenger Akali one trick, the only way Ari gets killed pre-6 is if she uh, lets a colleague run up to her with Q and then shroud towards her, hit her with a bunch of abilities. If 
Akali is threatening to do damage and you think there's a chance she can get close to you, she will always trade better. So be careful. Just use your range to your advantage. Uh, on top of that, Akali is going to look to kill you at six. If you are absolutely based at this game and you think that Akali is going to ult plus E you, you can wait to use your dash sideways during Akali's ult plus E combo. The only way Akali doesn't hit her E and do a lot of damage to you is if someone dashes in the middle of it. So you want to wait till Akali's like about to land on you, then start dashing sideways. By then, Akali's E will be buffered and ready to go, and you will be able to completely dodge it. And Akali, without her E, isn't going to be able to get you low. You might even be able to kill her. Um, she won't be able to get you low as easily versus Ari using all of her abilities. Keep in mind, you want to outrange her. You don't want to let her trade back. Otherwise, it's going to be a really bad time. Akali does way more damage than Ari. Next up, we have Akshan. Akshan is most likely going to be a farm lane. Um, they're both ranged champions. Neither champion wants to go too far forward because the other will just trade really hard. Um, the only thing I would suggest is to farm very well. I would suggest to um, try to shove the wave and roam as, as many times as possible, get as many turns in as possible to uh, have pressure on the map between waves. And if your jungler is willing to gank, your support's willing to gank, one pro tip I would use is um, you can actually ult in the way of Akshan during his little swing, his E. If you ult and get in the way, you can body block Akshan and he can't dash away. And then he is essentially as immobile as an Annie. He's very free to kill. Um, and other than that, I mean, don't get hit by too many autos. If he runs up to auto, you can Q him and then auto trade back for about break even. Um, you're not gonna want to use auto W auto as much versus Akshan. This really just is more of a farm lane where once again, whoever steps forward will usually take the worst trade. Um, but with that in mind, it's just, a, it's just a video game. If you want to play aggressive and practice your limits, you know, certain situations will come up. Maybe you can land that charm, uh, that max range Q over and over again. Definitely don't, don't turn off your aggression. Just don't have it at a thousand percent. Next up is going to be Anivia mid. This champion is essentially another farm lane with small trades put into it. It's going to revolve around you keeping the wave equal, but trying to keep the wave in a good spot. Anivia will naturally shove the wave by trying to poke you with her Q. And if you have good wave management, you could try to use that to get the wave under your turret. Anivia is an immobile mage that can be ganked or killed by yourself at six um, with enough mobility and damage. So what you'd wanna do is use your W, most likely to dodge her Q. And other than that, have fun auto queuing her. The only thing that can really do damage to you is if Anivia lands her Q, because then her E does way more bonus damage. So dodge her stun, her circle Q. Dodge it with your W, or maybe with your ult, and other than that, you're gonna wanna shove the wave and roam. Your priority is not to kill Anivia. Your priority is to either get her ganked and kill her or to roam. And what I meant by that is it's your priority is not to solo kill her. It is, she goes tanky, she goes rod of ages. She is, she has an egg. It's just a lot of time investment to try and kill her over the course of several waves. Um, when there are likely better options. If there aren't better options, if you're if your bot and top lane aren't gankable, uh, then you would want to practice good strategy to eventually solo kill or take her down. Next up, we have Annie. Annie is going to be a champion that Ari can destroy with the right skill shot usage. Ari's Q will slightly outrange Annie's W. I believe it outranges Annie's Q as well. Um, so you have a bit of range advantage in that matchup. 
And whenever Annie doesn't have her stun up, you can auto W auto her as well. Uh, past that, she is about as tanky as you, but you have the range advantage. So just knowing not to get hit by tippers and get killed from 75% health. Um, she also tends to push the wave harder. Even her last hits are with Qs. And as long as you're not spamming your Q into the enemy minion wave, it should push into your favor, giving you good wave control. And that's what most of these mid lane mage, mage matchups are, is just getting the wave into your side of the map so that you have a lot more opportunity to kill her, to get ganks. Uh, she'll be focused on trying to get the wave in. You can just trade. Sometimes you can just do a bunch of damage to her and she won't even trade back. She's just trying to shove the wave in. Uh, so yeah, and then pass six. Um, it's just a matter of ulting on top of her when you think you have the damage and her tippers won't kill you. Uh, lane is pretty straightforward, and he's a very straightforward champion, so just do the best you can possibly do, and um, as long as you know not to get in range of Tibbers when Annie can stun flash ult you, you'll be fine. Um, next up, we have Aurelian Soul. Aurelian Soul is essentially a farm lane that you can poke whenever your cooldowns are up. Aurelian Soul has his EQ combo, but Ari is just looking to auto W auto, then Q on the way out, or Q auto W, really short trades. Aurelian Soul wants to shove his laser into your soul. Ari just wants to throw her abilities out and run away. You can see how Ari would win that. Uh, Aurelian Soul needs more time to do damage, his maximum potential damage. So take those small trades over and over again. Once again, Aurelian Soul naturally shoves the wave, so you have a really good opportunity to set up for a kill um, as early as level five, but likely at level six and beyond or with the help of a jungler. Um, champions that are relatively immobile like Aurelian Soul, um, you can just also flash charm him if you ease away. Um, it's a very, very easy thing. You can also save one ult charge for Aurelian Soul's ultimate, and you can see how unplayable it becomes for Aurelian Soul very, very quickly. Up next, we have Azir. Against this champion, he is going to slightly outrange you, so trying to go for a charm is going to be a bit tricky, but in the early lane, he doesn't do much damage with his soldiers at all. So if he tries to set a soldier in the back line where you're standing with your minions, you can actually run up to him auto W auto pretty easily and he won't be able to do much damage back because you can just use your movement speed burst on your W to get away from his soldiers and to get on top of him and do damage. Past that, you can pretty much imagine how level six will go. Um, if you try to ult in, he will try to ult you into his turret. Depending on how much you've chunked him, you might be able to just take that ult or you can uh, try to avoid it, stay out of range of his ultimate. But I will say, once he uses his ult, you can literally use your ult, just dash right through the wall. So this lane is mostly going to be a farm lane until a jungler shows up. So that is pretty much gonna be that. Next up, we have Brand. Uh, Brand is going to be a champion in which you can definitely win but you're gonna wanna use your W to dodge his W. And on top of that, you wanna be careful about his E on the minions spreading to you. Uh, so what you wanna do is stay a little bit far away from minions. And then if he uses his abilities or an ability to shove the wave, that is your opportunity to go in for a potential good trade. Try to land your auto W auto, or maybe even a range charm into a Q. Opportunities are endless. Try to play off of his cooldowns being down. Other than that, once you have level six, you should be able to dodge his stun fairly easily with your ult. Um, and then another thing is, if he tries to ult you in a 1v1, you can ult away from him and any other minions that might get his ult to bounce and hit you multiple times. So yeah, I think Ari should do really well against Brand. Next up, we have Briar. This champion is very strong, but this champion is also going to be very easy to poke out. 
What you want to do against Briar is stay max range of her the entire time, because if she presses W and then Qs onto you, she will do a ton of damage. But all you need to do is stay at max range, go for auto W auto, continue to be max range, and then if she ever commits onto you, jumps onto you, you use your charm right on top of her, uh, right when she jumps on top of you, and you should be able to disengage any fight, should be relatively easy. Next up, we have Caitlyn. If you go against a Caitlyn mid, it is as simple as staying max range to farm minions with your Q, and once you hit level six, you go back and you simply all in her. She is very squishy, she is mostly immobile, and she naturally shoves the wave um, with her Q. If she's trying to poke you, just let her shove the wave, get the wave under your turret and ult her at six. You should be able to 100 to zero her before she gets to her turret or have a jungler help you. Other than that, it's quite simple. You only wanna get in her auto attack range when she uh, you have your abilities up and you'll always take a good trade. She's an 80 carry, um, they're not meant to be mid lane. Next up, we have Camille. If you're going against a Camille, all you have to do is be worried about her eating a wall and then flying onto you. If you stay away from the wall, you should be able to destroy her with auto W auto combos, Q as necessary, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the one thing you want to do is not get all in by her ult at level six because she does a lot of damage and she can trap you in there. So just be a little bit wary about that. And other than that, you should be able to bully the Camille the entire lane. Next up, we have Cassiopeia. This champion is a bit slithery uh, in that she has a good amount of range. So trying to hit her with your abilities is gonna be a little bit tricky. What you can do at level one is if she misses her Q or she starts E, you can go in for the auto W auto. And then past that, you are simply gonna be looking to juke her Q and then hitting her with your own damage, whether it be auto W auto or a auto Q auto, anything of the sort, any of the basic trading patterns. You'll wanna do that when she misses her Q or when her Q is down because she used it on a minion. Past that, you can use your ult and then immediately turn behind her. Your ult has just enough time on the dash that it should make her react by ulting you. And then if you ult and immediately turn around, you should be able to get her ult out without getting stunned and then proceed to kill her as you possibly could. Next up, we have Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath is going to be a bit tricky because while he's melee, he is very hard to chunk out of the lane, poke out of the lane because of his passive sustain. What I would recommend is using your auto W auto whenever your mana flow or electrocute are up just to get that going for you. But other than that, he should naturally push the wave because every ability he has is AOE. So it should be relatively easy to get the wave under your turret and ask for a gank. He is an immobile mage with no, no chance of escaping if he gets ganked. Um, so just play the wave and uh, focus on doing that. Pass six, similar situation, get him under your turret and then you can start poking him out, get him low and then potentially all in him uh, once you think he is low enough. Next up, we have Corky. He is very, very short range, so you should be able to take good trades on him, auto W auto, and then back up. And if he ever goes for anything past that, you just stay out of the minion wave and charm him. Other than that, you can also auto Q him as well. You can also just hit Qs because his, once again, his range is so short, he's half a melee champion. Um, and once you hit level six, you can use your ult to fly with him. Corky is a very easy lane to beat. All you want to do is make sure that you trade short trades with him because he does have a bit more damage with his autos and that's about it. You're good to go. Next up, we have Diana. If you want to play against Diana as Ari, it's quite simple. The first thing is her Q that flies out is what makes it so she can use her E and get a reset on it. That Q is in a crescent. Uh, meaning it's like a half circle. What you want to do, if you want to go for a trade against her, 
try to bait out her Q, and then you can actually run into her, avoiding the Q damage. Other than that, to keep it simple, auto W auto because she is a melee champion, and if she ever E's onto you, you can wait until she lands and then charm her. I believe Diana's dash will land behind you, so just wait until um, she lands if you're in a minion wave, or if she's running at you and there's no minions, then you can 100% cancel out her E by just throwing a charm at her. Past that, you can use your ultimate to get out of her ultimate damage. So say she jumps on you and pulls you in, you can actually just ult immediately out of that. Uh, press W as well for the bonus movement speed if you have it. And this matchup is fairly simple. What happens and what can go wrong is if you aren't diligent with dodging out her Q, or if you stay when you have a low enough HP, or if you're not warding, she works really well with getting a jungler to help because she can just fly in and knock you up. So those are the only things. Next up, we have Echo. Echo is incredibly easy to beat because if he jumps on you with the E, you just charm him and run away. Uh, on top of that, he's a melee champion. If he tries to push the wave out, you can Q him, you can auto W auto him, you have all of the resources to win and destroy him with good combos, range versus melee. Um, the only thing you should worry about is him using W in the Fog of War and then hitting you with the stun and chunking you out. Other than that, if he tries to E on top of you and then Q auto, you just need to not be in range for him to E you unless you have your charm up, but it is recommended for that reason, past like level two or three, to just hit him with max range Qs, um, or you need you should have charm up if you're gonna get in range for him to be able to jump you. That's the bottom line. Next up, we have Fizz. Fizz is a champion that eats Ari alive if you're not incredibly careful. He can jump over your charm, he can get on top of you with queuing a minion, and he can hit you with a very long range fish ult. For his ultimate, you wanna use your ultimate to dodge it. It's incredibly important. Fizz eats Ari's alive because he is so so much damage and Ari is so squishy. The biggest thing I could say is you don't want to commit too much onto Fizz in terms of W and E unless he has his cooldowns down. Um, because if you use your W on him and he negates it with his E, or if you try to charm him without him engaging, and now your charm is down, or your you know your W is down because you the burst of movement speed is down, he will just jump on you and take a huge trade, if not kill you. So this lane is easy, but only if you use max range Qs, or at least hold your E uh, your charm for his Q. And you never want to be in range of Fizz to Q you unless he has unless he uses his E to get closer to you. Because if he can Q you and he didn't have to use his E to get there, then he is going to be able to use E to dodge your abilities. Or at, yeah, so it's very important. Remember that. And that's it. Next up we have Galio. Galio is fairly simple. Uh, he has a very telegraphed dash towards you, so your E counters Galio's E, so there's that. You can auto W auto him fairly safely, and on top of that, your Q and his Q are essentially very much similar. Uh, this lane is going to be pretty farm heavy, because Galio can be tanky and just shove and roam. Um, but I would say that you do have potential by just playing the lane um, to freeze under your turret, Galio's a mage that is immobile. He's a melee champion that's immobile. Uh, you can definitely get in front of his E so he can't dash away. And yeah, he's honestly super easy to gank um, if you have decent wave management. Next up, we have Gangplank. This champion is fairly simple as uh, uh, Ari because you just need to auto W auto him when he runs up to Q you. He is a melee champion, that's all you can do. You will take the better trade. You also have ranged autos, meaning it's fairly safe for you to try and kill his barrels 
what you want to do against Gangplank as a general rule of thumb against as any champion mostly you want to get used to be killing his barrels out timing him because that is going to make you win so many more games uh so many lanes and just games in general so definitely try to try to kill his barrels before he pops them onto you uh it's worth a shot but past that um his w counters your e which is no problem you just never want to be in range for him to auto you and you will not struggle you'll be fine that's all against garen what you want to do is auto w auto but you want to do it kiting back he will try to q on top of you hit you with the q and then spin all you have to do is kite him and if he if for some reason he's getting really close you charm it is a very very simple lane but you can't mess up even once because if he q if he cues you and then spins you'll be down to like 70 percent and then he'll just flash q ult ignite and then kill you on the next go garen's ult uh his execution threshold against a squishy mage like ari is incredibly high so just stay just don't mess up don't get hit by any of his stuff don't greed for it because yeah garen's are really good at baiting you since you know they don't have any mobility they have to figure out really clever ways to kill you so he'll make you think he'll you'll get him and then he'll just press w and yeah uh just be very careful honestly just poke him use him as a tool for mana flow uh mana flow procs and that's it uh next up we have gragas gragas is a very straightforward matchup as well if he ease towards you use your charm to counter that out it'll negate all of the damage and stun he would do uh his q can be you can run out of it using your w if it's a long range enough one but other than that i mean if he like say it's level one and you th he throws a q at you you auto w auto the trade is better and if he tries to uh make a play on you at six you can literally say he ults behind you but you just ult towards your turret He'll, he'll end up throwing you into safety. So it's truly a simple, straightforward lane. Up next, we have Graves. Graves is a very, very simple champion to beat in the lane. Just stay behind minions. He cannot attack through minions. He has to attack whatever's in front of him. With that in mind, auto W auto, basic combos. The lane is so incredibly simple. Next up, we have Heimerdinger. This champion will destroy you if you're not careful. So make sure that you are only playing to farm until six. You can use, you can even farm his turrets by queuing if you want to line yourself up to attack minions and his turrets at the same time. But don't try to kill him until six or with a jungler gank uh, because he does an insane amount of damage when he, uh, if you step forward and he presses E and then his turrets get empowered. Just play it safe as a farm lane. You will outscale him because Heimerdinger is indeed a useless champion. Uh, next up, we have Huey. This champion has a lot of potential to outplay Ari at what she wants to do. Huey has a bit longer range. Huey will not let Ari um, ult, her, ult him. So what you need to do is stand behind minions and just play for Q procs against him. Hit him at the tip of your Q. That's about the only thing you can do for poke. Um, past that, at level six, he is very squishy. If you can do a little bit of poke, get him to like 75, 80%, then you can finish him off by ulting towards him. You can flash sideways um, to avoid his EQ, which is the, um, the fear he throws at you the purple little skill shot that will CC you. Uh, and then you can continue to ult towards him. But in general, this champion is very gankable uh, and very diveable at six. So that is something to note potentially if your jungler has a brain. Next up, we have Aurelia. This champion is incredibly, incredibly straightforward to play against, yet some people just don't get it. I really is going to want to queue three minions and then queue you at level one. And then she'll do about 120 damage per auto and she'll kill you in like six autos. What you want to do is not let her do that. You can actually step up and auto W auto her before the minions are within 
execution range of her Q to cheese her and do about 30% of her health right there, then there. Other than that, what you can do is just stay back and farm. She pushes the wave very naturally. Um, it's just what it really is do. They shove and they just can't help rescue. Um, she will try to Q and instantly E you at the same time. Uh, that is something to be worried about. But essentially, this lane is incredibly simple as long as you don't get hit by your E and you have your W to give you burst of movement speed to dodge it. And if she does hit you with the E, just know that her Q does land her behind her. So you can press your charm behind you in anticipation. Um, and that should be very helpful. Um, there's lots of potential to just like get dove and then just just charm them. Uh, I realize they're very aggressive, so be very careful in this lane, but practice playing aggressive. You shouldn't be afraid of her just because she does a lot of damage sometimes. Yeah. Um, next up, we have Jace mid. Jace is going to try to jump you with his human form Q auto and then go into range form and then um, hit you with an auto EQ. Essentially, he's just going to try to jump you and then go into range form and blast you. What you can do to counter this is you can actually uh, stay out of range of his Q, his human form Q, so he can't dash onto you. And that means that he's only able to use ranged. That means that you can take the better trades. As long as you stay good distance away from Jace, you will always take an even trade, if not better, as long as you don't miss uh, your abilities. But Jace is just like Ari in that he also can't miss abilities. It's, it's a skill-based matchup, but what I would say is like use your W to help you dodge out his Q, his, uh, his range ability, his blast, shockwave, shock blast, and um, you should be good uh, if he tries to human form dash onto you with his Q, you can use your uh, charm very sa uh, simply. Just don't waste your charm trying to chunk him out if you're at a point where he could just jump you afterwards and kill you. Next up, we have Cassante mid. Cassante is incredibly tanky and it is impossible for you to kill her, him rather. So what I would do is just focus on getting everything that you can use to shove and roam. Um, maybe even going for a uh, minion dematerializer. You don't need it though at all, um, but play to shove and roam. Cassante doesn't do much damage at all, but don't even consider trying to kill him. Don't go for Lyandris just because he's a tank, unless top lane and jungle are also tanks. Then you can consider it, but you should be playing to play with your jungler and gank side lanes. And then you can use your W to avoid his um, his Q3 that can pull you in, that the long range Q knockup. This lane is very, very easy. Just farm, outscale. Be more useful than him, that's all. Next up, we have Kaisa. Kaisa is gonna want to use her auto Q early on in the lane, but your auto W does a tiny bit more damage, I believe but you wanna be kiting backwards while you use it. So don't just stand there and both trade autos over and over again. Take very short trades with Kai'Sa. Um, other than that, her W comes up very slowly and you can stand behind minions. And then level six, you destroy her because she's an AD carry and you're playing Ari. So you can just 100 to zero her essentially um, as long as you keep the wave under your turret. Next up, we have Karma mid. Karma is a nightmare, but also very simple at the same time. What you want to do against Karma is stand behind minions so that her Q doesn't poke you. And then if she presses W on you, you can actually just uh, W to run away, get out of that tether range, and then proceed to continue destroying her for a while. Um, I don't think it's worth even trading against Karma unless she tries to trade you because she has a shield, a W and a empowered Q. But if she uses her Q on the menu wave to farm, then you have an opportunity 
to definitely jump on her and do a bunch of damage. Other than that, play for freezing the wave under your turret and play for killing her at six um, or getting a jungler to help you or the support even uh, at six because you with a little bit more damage, you ult on top of her, hit the charm, and she's an immobile mage once again. She has, a, she has an AoE slow and she can root someone. She's a shield, but she's still immobile and two people will destroy her. And she pushes the wave very often, so easy. Up next, we have Cassidin. Cassidin is very simple to destroy, but what you can do is actually wait out his Q uh, AP shield. If he uses it on you and he's not um, under his turret, you will destroy him by auto attacking him to death because he's melee. Just stay out of range of his um, of his W. You don't want to get in melee range of him, of course. And other than that, it should be incredibly easy to just uh, auto W auto him while he goes for minions. Hit him with auto Q auto. Uh, if he goes for minions, he is just trying to get to 16, but he is useless until then. So just keep on harassing. Play the lane as aggressive as possible without minions uh, getting in your way. So you don't want to just run past the minion wave and start taking three minion autos at a time and his damage. Just keep going for small, small trades whenever he goes for minions, if you have abilities to do so. Next up, we have Katarina. Katarina is incredibly easy to bully out of lane in the early levels. And then at level six, you just also keep destroying her. If she jumps onto you, you can immediately use charm. If she tries to E and then ult, you just charm her. You don't waste your charm unless uh, she does that. You use all your other abilities to bully her. And for some reason, if she does get on top of you while uh, your charm is down and starts ulting you, you can just ult out. Just play the lane incredibly aggressive and you'll have a great time. Next up, we have Kale. Kale is incredibly easy to bully out. All you have to do is press auto W auto and throw out your abilities when she tries to farm. She's trying to get to level 16 and she doesn't really do anything, but you don't want to trade auto attack for auto attack. She will do more damage to you with autos in the long term. So keep going for short trades over and over and over again until it's time to alter flash in. And, you, know, you think you can actually kill her. Next up, we have Kennen. Kennen can slightly get beaten and out traded in the early lane. If you don't get hit by her empowered auto that marks you and then she presses W, all you have to do is wait, uh, either if she doesn't have it like level one or two, you can auto W auto behind minions or just try to dodge Kennen's Q, the shuriken. Uh, past that, it really is just a case of whenever Kennen uses her, their empowered auto on a minion to farm the last hit, then you can go in for some kind of trade. But because you're both ranged with good poke, um, especially when the other person gets out of the menu wave, it's mostly going to be a farm lane. Um, but past that, Ari can dodge Kennen's Q and get out of Kennen's ult with her ult. So. It's slightly Ari sided. Uh, next up, we have LeBlanc. LeBlanc is a very interesting matchup for Ari. Um, when she presses Q and then jumps on you with W, if you're not quick to charm, she will destroy you. She will murder your HP bar. For that reason, I recommend always running back um, you don't want to just stand there and last hit when you have a Q mark on you. You want to be, if she throws a Q at you and she's not in range for a W, um, it's going to be very good for you so you don't get hit by, you don't get her uh, sigil proc Other than that, you can charm her when she presses W. And if she uses Q to last hit a minion, you can go for a good trade it's going to likely be very LeBlanc favored if you are new to the matchup, but because you have teleport and LeBlanc runs Ignite, 
you can outscale. Uh, and this would be a matchup in it, which if you're struggling, you can get an early no magic and get a second or third item Banshees. Uh, that could be very helpful against her. Next up, we have Lissandra. Lissandra is going to try to Q the minions and then have that expand her Q duration uh, range to hit you for poke. You want to stay out of that line. She's going to try to keep direct, like changing her angle to hit a minion to expand and hit you. Just keep moving. Don't let her get that angle. Uh, other than that, you can just farm against her. You can, you're both going to be throwing Qs and that's about it because you're both ranged. Uh, it's essentially a farm lane. Um, and then I suppose at level six, if you alter, she'll either fly away with her E or she, she'll teleport away or she'll ult you or ult herself. So I think your best bet in this lane is to just farm and roam. But if she does extend to try and hit you with abilities, you got to fight back. You can't just take it. You got to trade back um, if she steps into your minions. So there you go. Next up, we have Lux. Lux is a very straightforward matchup. She has a very long range E. She has a Q that hits two minions and her laser does a lot of damage if you get hit by the Q. So what do you wanna do against our against Lux? One, you don't want to get hit by a Q. So you need two minions in the way of you or you need to be far enough range to the point where you can dodge if you also don't want to be like half asleep or like like i don't know you just it's so easy to dodge lux's q from a decent distance yet people run into it just just literally pay attention i guess is what i could say um other than that her e is very long range but it also takes a little bit of time to come out so what you can do is actually like pretend to run away and then run back she, back into her or you could pretend to run into the minion like pretend to run up to farm a minion and then back up and oftentimes you can actually just dodge it um with that said lux is immobile and while she does a lot of damage if you can get on top of her and charm her you will murder her hp bar um and you have an ult that can dash three to eight times well, if she cues you while you're running at her, ult sideways, you have two ults left, and then nothing else really matters. Um, you can save the second ult for when she presses E, but you should just, you should have so much dominance on Lux unless you get hit by her Q. That is the only way you lose lane, and it's such an easy ability to not get hit by. So priority is don't get hit by Q, and then the second priority is to uh, try to destroy her at six. There you go. Next up, we have Malphite. Malphite is a champion in which you will take slightly better trades than her uh, than him. All he's gonna do is try to press Q while you go for auto W auto. Uh, past that, you are going to want to continuously harass him as he tries to farm minions with his auto you're gonna to want to auto him you're on the like max range q him uh, you can't even go for a charm because he can't really do much to you until six past six you have the ability to ult his ult if you are good at predicting these things if you know when malphite would know that he can get a kill by ulting you then you know when you can actually run up to him and then ult away um at the perfect timing. That's a bit more advanced, I suppose. So you can just, I guess, not get too poked out. Um, but if you are poked out, if say he cues you at level six and you lose 20% of your HP and then he cues you again and now you're at like 65%, you know he's gonna ult you when his queues up again. Um, so you could even just anticipate it and then flash to the side. And then if he misses his ult, and you've done a little bit of poke back too, and whenever he cues you, you should be able to kill him fairly straightforward. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, next up, we have Malzahar. Malzahar is an incredibly straightforward matchup. He's gonna wanna shove his wave with his uh, Poison Cloud. 
his little AOE or his little damage over time thing that spreads. When he does that, you want to try and auto him initially to get rid of his shield. And then after your shield's down and you're not gonna take too much damage from minions, go in for an auto W auto or a Q, max range Q, all these simple poke trading patterns. Um, he, you wanna start by getting rid of that shield and then you wanna go again once like the minion wave is reset um, to do the poke. And he should be focused on just trying to farm minions and you don't wanna take long trades because he has void links that'll do a ton of damage to you. But past that, I mean, the funny thing is your E counters Malzahar. If uh, he goes in for an ultimate, as you already throw your charm out, you will cancel out his ultimate. You will literally break it because you have a skill, you have a CC skill shot flying in the air as he starts casting it. So it is a very easy lane for Ari to absolutely dominate. He's immobile. You counter his ult with your charm. Your E counters his R. Imagine that, how OP that is. Um, and yeah, just play aggressive. You can shove and roam as well. Malzahar can't really do too much about an Ari that wants to shove wave. He can shove his own wave, but Malzahar in general, not that useful as a champion. So you have, a lot, you have plenty of options. Up next, we have a Master Yi. If you go against a Master Yi, just know that his Q can make him land wherever he wants uh, around you. So hold your charm for after he lands. And other than that, if he ever tries to go for CS, you can Q him, you can auto W auto. The lane is yours to win. It's just, you need to have ult when he has ult and save your charm for whenever he jumps on top of you. Um, Preferably if he jumps on you with Q, you just press E and then W away to gain a gap so he's not able to auto attack you after the charm ends. Next up, we have Misfortune. If you're against Misfortune, she is a pretty long range champion with her E that doesn't do that much poke. So you can just farm against her and then kill her very easily at six. If she does try to run up to you to uh, auto Q you, you can definitely try to throw a Q as you run away. But because she does a lot of damage with her auto attacks, if she's AD, um, you want to not take long trades. You want to go for very short trades. And if she's AP, you want to use your W to get out of her E circle. And then you just destroy her at six either way. So just be careful of Misfortune's E if she's AP. And be careful about taking too many autos in a row if she's AD. You want to take short trades. Next up, we have Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser's range is very short and you need to really capitalize on that. So if he runs up to you to try and hit you with a Q or an E, stay out of range of those abilities. And if he runs up to you to try and you do poke, just throw a Q at him. Very, very, very short trades because Mordekaiser is very strong in the long trades. Um, on top of that, it really is just gonna be a situation where you need to be using ult to dodge his Q, ult to dodge his E. And if he hits you with his ultimate, you need to be trying to dodge out his abilities, his Q and E using the movement speed burst, using your ultimate um, and just try to be really sneaky with it. But if you wait until he presses Q to ult, then you will 100% dodge it every single time. And then his auto attacks, they do damage, but they're not nearly as much as his isolated Q while you're in his ultimate. Next up, we have Morgana. Morgana is going to try to throw Ws onto you and try to hit you with a Q. This lane is incredibly easy. Just use your W or just for movement speed or don't even just get out of her pool whenever she throws it and don't get hit by her Q. It is a very slow ability and it can only hit you if you run directly at her and don't sidestep or try to juke her out. On top of that, if she tries to ult you, you can really just ult right out of the tether range and then ult right back into her. Just try to realize if she has her Q up, you don't wanna ult right on top of her because then she'll just land a free Q. You wanna make it so she has to hit you with an ultimate. Um, if she ever wants to do damage to you, and you have a lot more tools to take these short trades. You, if she doesn't hit the Q, you're gonna take a better trade every single time. 
uh, you have way more opportunity. This lane is already favored unless you play like a complete noob and get hit by your Q. If you get hit by your Q, just evaluate how much damage you took. And if it looks like another one that leads into an ultimate and then she flashes uh, towards your turret, so you will guarantee that even if you ult out, you're not gonna avoid the stun. You just don't wanna get in her kill range, which is her Q, ult, and then flash into your turret so you can't ult away. And uh, yeah, just, just dodge the Q. Just, just dodge the Q, stay out of the pool, you'll be fine. Next up, we have Nefiri. Nefiri has a decent amount of poke with his Q1, Q2. So you want to be trying your best to avoid by dodging left and right. Other than that, if he uses his Q, he is very vulnerable to get hit by combos by you, whether it be just a Q, whether it be auto, W, auto. The one thing you don't want to do is use your charm unless he presses his W. If he presses his W and he charges at you, he will be in front of his dogs momentarily before they land. And that is when you want to use your charm. As he is dashing right towards you, it is the same thing I do when I play a Kali because it guarantees you land your singular linear skill shot. Uh, but once he lands, he'll have the dogs all around him and it's impossible to land a charm uh, because he just has all these things body blocking him. So yeah, that's essentially it. Um, if he ever Ws you, you want to counter it with an E and just run back. Because if you charm his W, he won't be in range. Uh, he won't be able to hit you with a Q or W uh, or an E rather. His, his whole combo is completely screwed. And then you should be able to do more damage to him throughout the lane. Um, this is a matchup where you have opportunity to play aggressive. So I recommend it whilst dodging out his Qs. Next up, we have Nasus. Nasus mid is simply going to press E and try to last it with Q. So what I would recommend is playing the wave to shove and roam. Killing Nasus is not impossible, but it's nearly impossible. I wouldn't recommend even bothering without a jungle gank because his Q um, with his passive, he gets life seal off his passive. So he's pretty much just going to be unkillable. He's probably gonna run teleport and buy tanky items as well. Um, so with that in mind, I mean, just use him as a tool to proc mana flow band if you have that as a rune and shove the wave and roam to other side lanes. He's not gonna be useful until 20 plus minutes into the game as he starts scaling. So in solo queue or in just any League of Legends game, you can take all the objectives in the meanwhile because he's not really a champion. You are so much more useful than a Nasus mid would be. Um, however, if you get stuck in the lane with him and you're both just stuck there in mid farming, 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 he is going to outscale you and he wants to keep you mid because he knows that. Um, Ari is much more useful than Nasus until late game. So, but you can't bully Nasus out very easily unless you get a gank. So uh, yeah, you can try playing aggressive, see how he responds. Maybe he's not a great player. Maybe he goes, maybe he'll go full AP and then you have a chance to kill him. But that is my recommendation. Next up, we have Nico. Nico has very decent poke, but if you stay max range, she'll never be able to hit do more than one tick of her Q. Nico's E can fly through minions. It is the snare that lasts like two and a half seconds, meaning she can Q you afterwards and hit you three times with it instead of just the one. What you want to do is save your W for whenever she tries to use her E if you're not confident in your ability to dodge skill shots. That, your, your W gives you good movement speed burst. It also costs almost no mana and it'll save you from ever losing the lane. On top of that, if Nico ever casts her ultimate, you can ult right out of it. You have to be quick with this lane. Uh, if you're not, Nico can do a lot of damage to you or even get the jump on you and kill you. Past that, one recommend recommendation slash tip is, if she ever goes missing or she recalls, ping your top and your bot, and maybe even type MIA and Nico, just so they might know and give them a chance to be worried about 
that seventh minion because you know she might try to gank the side lanes uh pretending to be a, a minion and other than that uh lane is pretty simple you outscale nico um by being a much bigger threat in roams but much bigger threat in team fights and yeah that's about it next up we have oriana oriana is essentially a farm lane with very short trades if Ori looks to Q you, um, she will have to run to a pretty close range to hit you with the QW. Um, when, when she runs towards you, you can try to hit her with the Q, but you want to be careful to not try to Q her too early. Um, you need to know the range of Oriana's Q. It's about the same exact range as Ari's Q. So once she is about to get into that threshold, you can trade even her QW for your Q. Other than that, you pretty much do want to just be looking to farm. Um, it's one of those lanes where both champions can really just win off of one gank. Um, I would recommend playing the lane relatively reactively. So if Oriana is going to go in for a last hit on a minion, then you can go for a Q on her while she's stuck in her auto attack animation. Other than that, you know, your ultimate is a, you have three dashes. One of them can get out of Oriana's ult. So that is super nice. And for that reason, I think the lane is already favored. And you should be able to just know that, hey, we trade even in lane. It's a kind of a skill matchup uh, for max range. But at six, I can ult right out of Oriana's ult and I'll still have two left over. So it's up to you to play the map um i would honestly just play to roam if i was in this matchup because like it's just it's kind of rough trying to poke out an oriana because she has like pretty good range and a shield and a, and a slow and all that nonsense i would try to get the lane in a good spot free six get a gank and then pass that just try to roam if you can uh, but if you want to go for the silico go for it up next we have pantheon Pantheon is a champion that can only do a lot if he gets in range to W you because an empowered W auto into a Q is going to be about 40% of your health at like level two, maybe even more, honestly. So as long as you stay out of range of Pantheon, you will be fine. Um, you can go in for autos from very max range and then run out. And then you can actually try to hit him with Qs as well but you don't want to try to get more than one auto. And after you hit your initial auto, you need to start running away immediately. Because if you're slow after you auto attack to run away, he will get in range to hit you with a W and then you're, you're, you've been chunked by 40, 50% of your health. And then he's going to get his empowered W again. His cooldown's going to come back up and he's just going to flash and one shot you. So that is something to be very worried about. Um, so, just be very careful in this lane. You have the ability to poke, but don't get greedy. Small, small, small trades. He's melee. The only range ability he has is a Q that does absolutely nothing. Um, that he he can charge up a Q that does like 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 two damage. So you'll be fine as long as you use your range to your uh, to your advantage. Next up, we have Kiana. Kiana is. A fairly straightforward matchup in that if she wants to guarantee damage onto you, she has to either hit you with a long range uh, snare off of her water Q. Basically, she'll try to pick up the water element and then throw a Q at you from max range and then follow up on that. You can dodge that fairly easily by staying a good range from her. You are a range champion. On top of that, either that or she's going to try and dash onto you with a Q to guarantee, to quote unquote guarantee it lands. But what you can do is if she tries to dash on you, you can immediately charm her. This matchup is a lot more dangerous than it seems if you waste your charm. If you don't have charm up, she can uh, E through a minion and then she can hit you with a snare and then auto attack and then hit you with a Q. She will destroy you if you waste your cooldowns. You play this lane to hit her with little bits of poke, very small trades, and you don't play to get greedy and kill her uh, until she's very low. 
you should win the lane by out CSing her, by just chunking her every time she goes in for minions. You don't win this lane by solo killing her at level four. Um, so yeah, unless you're like very good at the game, then that's awesome, good for you. <laughs> um, next up, we have Renekton mid. Renekton is a very tanky champion that does half of Arya's HP bar with one empowered W. So with that in mind, you can proc your auto W auto early for the mana flow band. Um, at level one, especially you can be pretty aggressive because he won't have more than, he might have his dash, but then if he starts dashing, you just run away. And then if he keeps attacking you, minions will do more than he does. Um, at level two, he might have his E, his, you know, his double dash and his W. If that is the case, you might consider going for charm at level two, um, just so that if he dashes onto you, you will be able to immediately negate out his ability to hit you with a W. Renekton's mid lane cheese is quite literally get to 40 or 50 fury, dash through a minion, and then hit you with an empowered W. It's literally that simple. If you know what Renekton does, you can stay away from his nonsense. So if he ever has, let's say you're both full health level three and he's got, you know, he's got 40 fury and he just, he just hits level three. He can auto to get 45 fury. Then he can E through the first minion wave. Now he has 50 fury. Um, and then he can try to hit you with the W and then E out. It, it's quite literally simple as if he jumps on you with the E, just use your charm and proceed to run away. That's literally it. And if he uses anything else, you can just poke him out. Um, however, in this lane, I would recommend getting a early Seeker's arm guard for the armor so that you don't get killed by him and you will outscale Renekton very hard. He is not very strong um, as a champion later on into the game. Next up, we have Riven. Riven has three, da four dashes. Good luck hitting your charm. <laughs> no, but jokes aside, all you need to do against a Riven is if you see her running at you, press W for that burst of movement speed to dash away. And then if she does use her E towards you, that is her most immediate and best dash. But you pretty much just want to save your charm for when she gets very close to you. You don't want to like, like I'm talking with an auto attack range. You don't want to use it if she's like two melee champions away in range, um, because then she'll have room to actually dodge your charm left, dodge it right, etc. And then you'll be playing a guessing game and you don't want to do that uh, because if you guess wrong in which way she dodges, you will die. <laughs> so just play, I guess, defensively against Riven. Um, you can go in for some auto W autos in the early levels because she won't have all of her abilities up. Um, but if she starts queuing you, queuing towards you, start running backwards. Uh, her auto attacks do a ton of damage because of her passive and she's just an AD champion in general. Um, but in general, you should be able to kite her back very easily. Her dashes aren't really that great. They're just, they're okay to, for like closing gap towards you and they're good against dodging your skill shots, mostly your charm. So just play mostly to last hit and um, hit her with auto W autos. Trying to cue her when her abilities are up, it's probably not gonna happen, but you probably should charm her when her shield is up. It's just literally never gonna happen. So just, just play for poke, play for farm, with her away, make her miss farm. That's about it. Next up, we have Rumble. Rumble has a lot of damage from a short range, but if you can avoid getting hit by Rumble's E, which is his little like harpoon he throws out that slows you, you will be completely safe in the lane because you can outrange his fire. The important thing is that you don't get hit by the harpoons or you let him run up to you and start blasting you with fire. All you have to do if he runs up to you past minions is to, uh, W away and then perhaps even go for an auto. He's gonna want to 
either just run directly at you with his fire, which is a very short range, so you run away from that, or he's going to harpoon you out of the minions. You can kind of tell what he wants to do by where he positions himself. If he's just running past his minions into yours, it means he's just not going to bother. He's just trying to hit you with fire. If he runs to the side, he's going to want to try and get you uh, with his E from a, a long range. But being that Ari has more range than Rumble, it should be very simple uh, and straightforward to poke him out. His abilities are very obvious in how they work. So just don't get ran over by him. Use your range to your advantage. And then at six, you both have uh, your ults and you can ult, use one of your dashes to get out of Rumble's ultimate and still have two left over. So very easy lane in that regard. Next up, we have Rise. Rise is going to try to hit you with EQs. Uh, he's gonna try and eat a minions and then Q the minions as well to spread onto you. What you wanna do against this is stay out of the minions if you can help it, but you also don't wanna get hit by too many of his Qs unless you're also trying to trade him. If he tries to E a minion uh, and you're in range to hit him with a W, auto or auto W auto or a Q, go for it. You can play this lane fairly aggressive. Rise isn't too strong early on. So try to play lane aggressively. Um, the biggest thing is just not getting caught by his chain AOE. Um, so don't get too close to the minions and end up getting chunked out over and over again. If you avoid that, you can play a little bit aggressive. Um, though he is ranged, you have a slight bit of range on him. Your abilities do a bit more and it's a bit more difficult for him to land his damage because he's going to probably hit his empowered uh, W on you if you're running right at him. But that means that he won't be able to do too much damage with his Q. Um, this lane is pretty straightforward. Just play for short trades. And at six, you will have much more damage than him. Being that his ultimate is utility, not damage. You have pure damage and mobility, which is much better in the 1v1, as you can imagine. Next up, we have Set. Set is going to try to get in range to pull you in with his E, and then he is gonna try and auto auto QQ you. If you stay out of range of his E, which is fairly short range, it's about 60% like of the range of your auto attack, you will never take damage in this lane. What you don't wanna do is do more than one auto at a time standing still, because then he will run at you, hit the E, and then take out half of your health. You should be able to, while cautiously, of course, poke him out with autos and Ws as he goes in for last hits, even Q him if he goes in for a minion. You have infinite priority in this lane to destroy him, but if he runs up to you with Q and pulls you in, he will do about half your health. And also on top of that, if you do a bunch of damage to him and he charges up a W, you need to try your best to dodge that. Um, it does do a good amount of damage, but considering you do short trades as Ari, you'll probably be very fine. Uh, Set's W is really good against engages, but short trades will obviously charge up his W less because he'll take less damage at a time. Uh, so it should be a very straightforward matchup. Just don't get in range of his melees. Next up, we have... Singed. All you have to do against a Singed is never get in range of his poison, never get, never run into his poison, never get flung. That's all you have to do. Other than that, whenever he goes into poison AOE the wave, you can chunk him out. It's very easy to kill Singed with decent mechanics. Um, you don't even need these mechanics, just auto W auto him whenever he goes up to you. And if he does run at you, Preferably don't waste your charm until he's right next to you. He might try to pretend to run at you just to get rid of your charm and then he will know that your charm is down and then you're gonna end up missing a bunch of minions because you you know, your charm is down. He can just threaten to run at you and fling you. Essentially, just play the lane to hit him with your auto W auto over and over and over again. And if you think you have a guaranteed opportunity to hit the charm, then EQ him. 
or if you want to try and cue him from max range that can be good too just be careful to not get flung by him uh and be careful to not get hit by his uh q poison don't run into it that's that's literally it and then also don't chase singe because that's rule number one of league of legends next up we have scion against scion all you have to do is make sure that you're not in a spot where he can dodge out your charm by having minions in front of him while he casts his q so if you stay out of range of his q or if you try to start autoing him from the side of the minion wave then you should have plenty of success just proccing mana flow bands he is quite tanky even if he goes full ad so it might be hard to kill him but if he's just trying to shove the wave and he's playing inting scion or he's trying to just keep proccing demolish in the mid lane definitely prioritize killing him um to farm him and then go for a dark seal early on if he is playing inting scion get a magis etc etc just to maximize the value of your champion um, against his and that is about it charm will counter out scions e and if you want to ult behind the scion or ult in front of scion as he ults away if he tries to escape with ultimate you can do that to body block it and that is it next up we have smolder smolder's main ability in lane is going to be that long range bubble what you want to do is you can even use your w to avoid it um, but ideally you wait for you play long range against smolder once she uses it if you can dodge it or either way if it's down you want to go in for an auto w auto or perhaps a w auto q uh, very short trades Smolder is an AD carry, so she will do a lot of damage to you in a longer fight. But if you take small trades, you have more poke in small trades. You have more damage than Smolder. So take the small trades. Um, and then at six, you can ult to the side to get out of her ultimate if you need to. Or rather, you can just all in her because she does not do much until she hits 225 stacks of her passive. And that won't be for at least 20 minutes into the game. Next up, we have Swain. Swain is all about dodging his E. If he can hit you with an E, he is going to hit you with a pull. He's going to Q you and W. All of his abilities will land. But if you are able to know that Swain's E is very slow, it, it takes quite a while before it even pulls back in the first place. You can either be very close to Swain and dodge it out, or you can be past max range. Um, he will try to hit you with his E as you go in for a minion to last hit. So knowing that you can actually sidestep uh, and dodge his E. And then if he doesn't have his E up, all he can hit you with is an auto and a Q. Then at that point, your auto W auto, your auto W Q, those combos all do more of the damage than him. Past that, he will say you're in a level six all in or anything when you both have ult his ult does a lot of healing and a lot of damage over time you need to get out of range so he's not you're not in range of his ult give it some time to expire it can go infinitely as long as he's draining any champion so keep that in mind stay out of range as long as you need to ult out of range if you have to uh, and then once that's gone, you should be very, very easily killing him because, um, you know, you have three dashes, a W, move and speed, burst. He shouldn't be hitting you with his E ever. You should be very aware of that ability and play accordingly. Next up, we have Silas. Silas is going to want to try and hit you with uh, his second E as early as level one, but especially level two and beyond. What you need to do against Silas is go into your minion wave and keep changing the angle so that you have a singular minion blocking him uh, from hitting you with the E2. That stun uh, plus damage is the most lethal part of Silas's kit most of the time mid lane. So if you can dodge that out, you actually will be able to take the better trade. And after he presses E to dash the first time, he has about five seconds to cast it the second time. So if you just do the song and dance in the minion wave as he's trying to hit you with the E2, 
uh, for about five seconds. After that, you should be able to destroy him in a trade. Um, you can start kiting him back if you want to. You can go in for a charm onto him, but just dodge that E2 and you should be good to go. Past that at six, um, he will be able to ult as well, but you're still ranged with more potential than he has. So if you do get in range um, and you don't have ult and he gets in range hit you with the E2, you can also charm and that'll cancel out the dash that he gets. You'll still get hit by the stun. You'll still take the damage, but he won't be able to get on top of you to hit you with his empowered auto attacks off his passive and he won't be able to hit you with the W. So keep that in mind. Keep your range until you think you have enough damage to all in him. Next up, we have Syndra. Syndra is a very interesting champion for Ari. It can be very painful if you don't dodge abilities. So let's get into the mind of a Syndra player. Level one, she's always going to start Q. She's going to want to hit you with the Q as you go in for a last hit on a minion. So what you want to do is get into range of Syndra's auto attack or Q rather, and then you want to immediately step to the side, step back. You need to try and make it seem like you're going into last hit and then instantly cut to the side. Um, get rid of her Q cooldown and then you should be able to have freedom to farm. You can hit her with an auto W auto uh, perhaps, or there's a different way you can do this. You can also use your burst of movement speed on your W to run in, into Syndra. She won't think that you're gonna bum rush her at level one or two or at any point until you show her that you're capable of doing it. Um, so that first time she tries to Q you while you go in for a minion, if you just W and run towards her, um, you know, she, she was gonna miss her Q, then she has nothing but an auto attack available. Uh, past that, you wanna not get hit by her Q, E plus W combo. That's when she throws the ball and then she pushes it into a stun and then she grabs another orb and then throws that. All you have to do to avoid that is not get hit by a stun. It does take about two seconds for her to throw the Q out and E before it, she starts casting and then it hits you. So you should be relatively safe if you keep moving left and right, up and down. Don't make it predictable. Um, it shouldn't be too difficult. You don't want to be too far forward anyways. Um, and yeah, other than that, I mean, your ultimate post six is very strong against Syndra. You can ult to the side to dodge Syndra's stun if you feel like that's something you're capable of doing. If your reaction timing is good enough, you can use your ult to dodge Syndra's Q if you want to. Or you can just bum rush her with your jungler or support because Syndra is immobile and Ari has three dashes and a charm and a movement speed burst. So it's quite easy to kill Syndra with the help of a teammate that has extra damage, uh, being that you just bum rush her. Next up, we have Talia. Talia is a bit difficult because of her E, making it so Ari can't really reliably ult in a certain area. However, Talia also doesn't have that much usefulness in lane. She has to hit everything. She has to throw her E out, then W uh, to push you into her minefield to do good damage, or she has to hit you with a bunch of Qs, which you can just stand behind minions for. So in general, Talia's short range, plus you standing behind your minions, means that there will be plenty of opportunity for you to take a good trade. Note that Talia's Q does have a bit of a splash range behind the minions, so you don't want to be right on top of the minions. You want to be slightly behind them. But once her Q's down, you have like a pretty decent opportunity to try and poke her out. She, her Q doesn't do too much damage either. You can use your W burst of movement speed if you are getting hit by it to just run to the side and not get hit by more than a few rocks. Uh, in general, Talia is very immobile, and once again, Ari has three dashes, a, a charm, a, a movement speed burst. Even if she presses E onto you, you can literally just run over it. You can flash uh, over the second half of it, and then you can start ulting her. Her E is not that big of a deal, honestly. Um, just don't dash through it, don't ult through it, and you won't get stunned. It's very easy. Next up, we have Talon. 
Talon is going to want to try and Q on top of you. Uh, he's going to want to try and W you while you go for minions. Hit two marks, the front end of his W and the back end. And once that's two marks, he just needs to Q on top of you to proc the bleed on his passive. You don't want to ever get hit by that. What you want to do is get hit by maybe one end of his W if you can't avoid it and then either run far back or to the side so he doesn't get the second end of his W that that pulls back to him. Because if you get by the first and second part of his W, you will get hit by, his, he'll try to Q you and that will take half your health out. So other than that, your W on top of being good to poke him out, because it gives you a burst of movement speed, you can use that to help you run to the side. Say you run up to auto attack Talon at the same time he presses W, you can auto attack him and then W to get that burst of movement speed to run to the side, depending on where he throws it, potentially you can run back out of the range of his W, if it's a max range W. Um, you have a lot of opportunity but if you ever get hit by the front and the second part and you see you have two stacks of the debuff stay away from his q range he can dash from a pretty long distance and if he hits you with that he's going to apply that passive and it's going to do a bunch of damage other than that ari is very safe against talon because when talon wants to press uh, q from max range or from a distance to try to dash onto ari he dashes linearly in a straight line towards Ari. You can use charm during that very, very easily. Um, assuming he's not ulted invisible and he like he doesn't go to the side before he cues you, it is incredibly easy to just charm Talon jumping on you pre-6. Post-6, I would imagine the way you would play this lane would be looking to uh, last hit minions and if he steps up to try and hit you with any ability, you cue him and back off. And eventually, uh, you will poke him out. You might miss a few minions if he plays incredibly aggressive, but if you land any cues, um, he will, after two or three cues, he will start getting low, and then his all-in doesn't 100 to zero you, uh, unless you mess everything up. And then at that point, he'll be in your lethal range, which means he is low enough for you to kill him if you play correctly. Um, so you should be able to actually kill him in that case. But the biggest thing is in this matchup is not getting killed pre-6 by not under, because people just don't understand how Talon works. He wants to W you twice and then Q you. And then the second time he'll just flash Q you because if he presses Q while he's on top of you, it'll crit and do a ton of damage. So that's it. Up next, we have Teemo. Against Timo, he's going to want to try to auto Q you and back off at the same time as you want to use your auto W auto. So you're, you do have to switch up your combo a little bit against Timo and his blind. And since you're not going to be sure when he uses blind and you don't want to trade multiple autos with him anyways, because his E empowers all of his autos, whereas you don't have anything like that, you want to go for short trades where you auto W Q to proc your electric Q, And that is it. Other than that, you can definitely kill him at six very easily. Few things, you do want to get Sweeper as soon as possible once you guys are both level six to clear out mushrooms and to not obviously run into mushrooms the best you can avoid it. And other than that, you just want to ult on top of him, charm him. You know, he might blind you, so you might not get a few autos off, but that's okay because he's very squishy and immobile. And uh, if you ult on top of him, it'll be very easy guaranteed to hit your charm um if he has flash up you can obviously ult on top of him and give him a chance to flash immediately don't just like charm off the get-go maybe give it like a second or two if you have room to work with uh, if not just immediately you know ult flat uh ult charm and that's about it lane is very straightforward uh timo does almost nothing yet people somehow die to him it's very difficult to die to timo just just don't fight him <laughs> um Unless you have your abilities up, that's literally it. Next up, we have Tristana. Tristana is going to want to jump on top of you and then press E and auto you a few times. So what you want to do is stand out of the way of minions. So if she jumps you, 
you can immediately charm her and back off with your W and maybe even throw an auto in on the way out to proc electrocute. Other than that, she is a very aggressive early game champion that does a ton of damage. So you just want to make sure you don't waste your abilities in unless it's reactionary and defensive. So I wouldn't actually recommend auto W autoing or even using your auto uh, Q auto or truly any combos against Trisana unless your jungler is ganking or if she's jumping on you. You want to always have your abilities up for when she jumps you. Because if you don't, you're going to get absolutely destroyed. You're going to end up getting zoned off of minions, etc, etc. The only way you win the lane is if you play it defensively or you outscale her um, by being more useful. You know, you have a resetting, dashing charm, like champion. Drasana doesn't really have all that. Uh, she has her own way, but uh, you can essentially just farm to six, roam, and uh, play for roaming and play the macro game and all that. Next up, we have Trinomir. If you go against a Trinomir mid, you can definitely use auto W auto, but what you want to do is make sure you always save your charm for when he spins on top of you. You should win this lane slowly but surely, unless he has Doran shield and second wind and he just keeps healing and out sustaining you. It's fine to just it's fine to just farm until your jungler shows up as well. Um, what you want to do is don't let him just shove the wave really hard and roam. Either shove, you can actually shove and poke him at the same time by hitting him with autos and pressing Q onto him and the enemy minion wave at the same time. The only thing you have to worry about is using your charm when he spins on top of you. Other than that, you will be completely fine. Don't waste your charm uh, trying to get a little bit of extra punk off on him, unless your jungler is there and you wanna try and snipe it. But you know, if your jungler has CC, let your jungler use that CC first, and then you can uh, combo it on top of it. Next up, we have Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate is a long range champion, but he's incredibly squishy. So this lane is essentially going to be a farm fest because if either champion steps up to attack the other, you'll both end up just taking equal amounts of poke for the most part. Uh, and then, you know, if he has a gold card, you just run away. Dodge his cues as he tries to shove. That's, they're very slow. You should never be getting hit by them. Uh, if he tries to pull, uh, just be aware that he might try to use red card on the minion wave next to you, which will AOE and hit you and then slow you so you're a little bit more likely to get hit by his Q. Essentially, stay away from minions, and when he doesn't have his W available, say he uses red card to clear the wave or blue card to get mana, or he uses gold card to try and poke you, but he ran away and now it's not up anymore. If his W is down, try to hit him with some kind of combo, you know. Maybe even try to charm him uh, if you can. But other than that, it's reactionary. Just play for six. You can definitely kill him at six. His ult is utility and it's a dash, whereas Ari's ult, I mean, oh, sorry, his ult's a teleport. Ari's ult is damage and dashing. So much better than TF uh, for level one, uh, for level six, one, one v ones. Up next, we have Varus. Varus is going to try to hit you with three autos and then drop an E on top of you. Be that is going to proc all of the marks that his auto attacks put onto you, or he'll even go for a charged up Q from a long distance afterwards. Long story short, you don't want to get hit by multiple Varus autos. All you want to do is take short trades, auto W auto, he he'll get two autos in the meanwhile. He should probably drop his E as well. You'll take about an even trade. Um, and the lane will pretty much play itself past that point. At level six, you definitely want to be aware of his ultimate being a skill shot that will uh, snare you for a few seconds. And he will get maximum marks. So he will get a bunch of damage off on you if he hits you with the ult and then charges up a Q. So what you want to do is have your ult available when his ult's up, you want to ult to the side when he casts it onto you. You can also use that to dodge his Q, and the lane will be very much favored for you. Varus is also an immobile mage, or sorry, well, an immobile AD carry slash mage, 
So he is incredibly easy to gank. He is so squishy. He has no dashing or anything like that. So ask your support, ask your jungler to gank. And at six, he should be absolutely free gold. Next up, we have Viagra. Viagra is going to try to use his Q to last hit a minion and then go through the minion to poke you because he will get AP if he hits you with his Q. His passive will stack. So what you wanna do against Viagra is stay behind two minions and make sure that if one minion in front of you is gonna die, you're not in the line in which he would farm a minion and be able to hit you afterwards. You'll see uh, Vagar will consistently be changing the angle of where he's standing to try and hit a minion, last hit a minion, and hit you as well. So you need to get out of that line. And whenever his Q is down, you want to try to run up to him, make him miss a few, make him miss a minion or two, maybe even go in for an auto W auto, uh, depending if you get close enough. And past that, um, you want to avoid getting stunned by him. Uh, and what that means is if he drops the cage, it's okay to be stuck in that cage for a little bit, assuming there's no jungler or like, you know, no one's ganking you. Um, but you don't want to get stunned because then he will land his W and his Q. But if you're in the cage and he drops his W, you can easily just move to the side and dodge it. And then he won't have any abilities up. And then you can you know, if you're level six, you can ult on him and destroy him. He is an immobile mage that is very, very easy to kill at level six. Um, you just need to get rid of that cage and then it should be easy past that. Next up, we have Velkaz. All you want to do against Velkaz is avoid getting hit by his long range cues, which is a long skill shot that will then split into uh, two different directions, kind of like making a T. And you do that by staying to the side of minions. Minions can block that for you. Other than that, if he throws out his W, which is a straight line that like makes a crease in the floor, it goes out pretty slowly. So just get out of the range of that. And if he throws out his E, you'll know very clearly as well. Uh, what I would recommend is to probably just farm until six because he has a lot more range than Ari. And if Ari tries to run up to Velkaz, Velkaz will just throw a Q at you, which slows you, and then he'll follow up with whatever chain of abilities. At six, it's very easy to kill Velkaz because your ult will counter out his CC. You can dodge Velkaz's E with your ultimate and dodge out his Q. You can dodge out anything because Velkaz is only skill shots. Um, another pro tip, if you get in a situation where you think it might be useful, is you can actually ult behind Velkaz if he's using his ultimate, and it's very hard for him to turn that laser, if not impossible, all the way uh, into a 180 uh, to look the complete opposite direction with his ultimate without canceling it. Next up, we have Vex. Vex's only tool to do anything to Ari is to hit a E into an auto attack and because Ari is ranged, Vex has to be very calculated in when she goes in for that. She's gonna try to hit you with her E, which is the circle that uh, marks everything, and then auto attack you as you go in for a minion uh, to farm. Knowing that, you can actually run up to pretend to last at a minion and bait out her E. Once she doesn't have her fear up, which is the, I think it's the bar under her health bar that goes red, you will be able to take good trades by just uh, auto W autoing her. And if she throws her Q out, it goes out very slow at the beginning. So you can definitely just dodge that. Dodge her skill shots. Once they're down, you can go in for your own. Past that, she gets a bit of bonus damage whenever you use your ultimate, but it doesn't actually change the lane much at all. It's just whenever you ult, she will get a bit empowered on her next auto attack or ability. Don't even worry about that. Don't even worry about that. Um, another thing to worry, another thing you should worry about though, is her long range ultimate. It is relatively slow to come out. And if you see it, it does a lot of damage and it'll teleport her to you. It'll dash her towards you and then she can land everything. 
because if her fear is up, she can land on top of you with her ult, hit her W, and then EQ you. Essentially, if she throws her ult at you and your ult is up, ult to the side, dodge it. If you think there's any chance you can die. Even if you have to flash it. Uh, Vex is a very strong champion. She can do like 75% of your health at six uh, if she's gone back with just one ult combo. It's very, very strong. So dodge that. <laughs> Next up, we have Victor. If you're going into Victor as Ari, the biggest thing that you want to be careful about is Victor hitting you with a Q auto E because you can't really out trade that. But what you can do is actually Q the Victor while he is running up to try and hit you with his Q. Keep the range a bit longer on this lane. Um, his short to mid range trade is just slightly better unless you land a charm. Um, so what I would recommend is keeping it to a longer range where you're, he has to use his laser, you have to use your Q. Um, and if he does run up to Q you, um, then I would probably run to the side of the minions, or if you think you have an angle to charm him, just shoot out the charm. If it lands, follow up with the Q. If it misses, that's that's fine. But you don't want to really like trade him when he Q auto ease you because he gets a shield and that'll kind of just like negate a big part of your auto W auto combo that you'd be doing at a short range. Um, so keep the keep the range a little bit longer. But then the good news is at level six, uh, he'll drop the ult on you, the little thundercloud that does damage. You can just obviously ult right out of it. Um, so that is really good for your favor. So the lane, once again, it should play itself. If you play it a longer range, you'll have better trades. Uh, you'll be farming most of the time, honestly, and like try not to let him shove you in. Try to just auto a bunch of minions. And if he goes up to Q you uh, for his Q auto E combo, then you just cue him and run, or if you have a chance to charm him, do that uh, on t before everything else. Next up, we have Vladimir. Vladimir is looking to run at you whenever his Q is up to heal off of you and do a decent amount of damage, but Vladimir doesn't actually do that much damage. He is a late game champion. So if you auto W auto as he runs up to Q you, you will actually take a slightly better trade. Past that, standing behind minions will be very helpful for avoiding getting hit by his E, but your W goes over minions if you auto attack him, your Q goes through minions. Therefore, minions are your best friends in this lane. Uh, other than that, he does have that pool, so I would imagine if you do try to ult on top of him, you should probably use your ult, but then wait a second. Give him a chance uh, to use his pool in panic what you want to do is you want to ult right on top of him and then wait a second uh you don't if you ult like pretty far away from him and like there's plenty of time for him to react he's not going to think to pull immediately but if you use that second ult maybe you use your ult the first one gets like midway towards him second one you ult on top of him then he kind of has to use his pool in a panic if he's low enough give it a second if he doesn't well then just use your Use your charm uh, on top of him and then it'll land most likely unless he's unless he could just read your mind which no no one will be able to predict that it's going to work 90 percent of the time um past that um i don't recommend getting anti-heal against vladimir some people like to get oblivion orb i think the best thing you can do is to just maybe go ignite in this lane if not um you should be fine just whenever he has an empowered Q, which is like the 100 rage thing, or is about to have that up, just run away from him. That's the biggest and only reason you'll ever lose lane is if he hits you with empowered Qs. Other than that, you trade equal, if not slightly better, every single time. Um, but yeah, that empowered Q is your worst nightmare. Uh, next up. Next up, we have Zareth. Zareth is a very interesting matchup because he has two main abilities that you'll have to worry about. His W is the circle and it does a bunch of damage in the middle, but it slows uh, anyone who hits, anyone who hits with it. 
whether it be in the outer edge or the middle of it. And his Q is fairly easy to dodge if you zigzag back and forth, but you need, for Xerath, and most champions in general have skill shots, you can't have a predictable dodging pattern. You can't just go left, right, left, right, because after 30 seconds of going left, right, left, right, they're gonna know that, okay, this guy literally hasn't changed his pattern, and I'm just gonna, when you go left, I'm gonna hit you left. When you go right, I'm gonna hit you right. Um, so you need to be unpredictable. Um, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. Uh, like, whatever your version is, just don't be an easy target. And honestly, more important than that, because that's just very meta and like high level stuff, don't be in your minion wave. Xerath's love to shove the wave, especially once they get their lost chapter, their, their first like mana item. Xerath's love to just shove wave and they'd be really happy if they could hit minions and you at the same time. So if you stand off to the side of the minions, then he'll have to choose at least. And that could be very helpful because the longer he's stuck in lane as an immobile mage um, with the wave shoving, because everything he has is AOE pretty much, um, he'll end up putting himself in a bad spot. If he can't get a hard shove in, then you can freeze very easily off of a slow push. Um, but, the other thing to worry about is Zareth's stun. It's a fairly slow skill shot that you can easily dodge by using W for the burst of movement speed or just being far enough range from it. Or you can flash it if you want, or you can ult to the side to avoid it. There are a lot of ways to dodge Zareth's stun. He should really never hit an Ari with it unless you're ulting right on top of the Zareth to hit him with the charm. In which case you might end up just both hitting each other with your CC. You Q charm him, he stuns you, and then you can proceed from there. Um, the biggest thing is to just not get poked out really hard. Uh, if, if it feels like Xerath is like scripting, then you could definitely just get an early uh, Banshee's Veil, like maybe get like the Null Magic, get that little shield item. Um, like honestly, even after your lost chapter just to relieve a lot of the pain. But honestly, the most important thing is to just not give him a very free lane. He will shove the lane naturally because of his AOE abilities. And then you can just freeze uh, or keep the minion wave in a good spot. So he'll have to overextend. And then you can either kill him or you can have a jungler help you kill him because he'll just be so far away from his mid turret and such a slow and mobile champion. So it'll be really hard for him to do anything about it. Next up, we have Yasuo. Yasuo is a rough matchup for Ari because Yasuo can dash in infinitely and win wall all of Ari's abilities. So my best advice to you is to not play the lane in any way, shape or form aggressively. Level one, you can auto W auto, get some nice mana flow procs early on, but level two, I mean, he will, if there are minions, he will dash through them, get on top of you, and start doing a ton of damage with autos and Qs. He's an 80 champion that does that just has he just too much damage early on. It's just not don't even bother. Just just place reactionary. If he dashes through minions, use your W. You can maybe throw an auto on him on the way out, and then maybe even use your Q. He'll probably win wall it if it's level three and beyond. Um, but what you don't want to do is not have abilities up against Yasuo. You only want to use your abilities defensively. And I mean like defensively, because if he uses his dash, if he dashes through minions and you don't have your W up, you don't have your E up, or say you use, you don't have W up, but you do have your charm up, he will dash through minions. And as you try to charm him, he's going to win while you, and he's going to end up taking half of your health the first time he'll dive you the second time so just play reactionary in this matchup because he is kind of a counter pick next up we have yone yone is a bit easier than yasuo because he doesn't have a wind wall and yone is a he literally throws himself in a straight line with his third q meaning you can very easily charm him when he goes in for that he might get his third q ready and then uses e and then use his Q to fly towards you. Just charm him, use your W and auto him on the way out. 
the lane is fairly easy if you save your E for his Q3. Other than that, you know, he'll, he'll probably use his W, that thing that gives him a shield and does a good AoE. The shield only lasts like three seconds. Uh, after that's down, just you can be auto W, autoing him whenever you have Electrocute up. Uh, you can be hitting him with Qs. He is a melee champion at the end of the day. Uh, post six, you definitely want to ult when he ults. If he is ulting on you, ult to the side. And then if you think he's gonna kill you, start ulting away towards your turret. You have plenty of mobility to not die to him. The issue would be when you think you can kill him and you commit abilities, and then he'll end up like dashing to the side or tanking it and barely having enough health to kill you. Already without abilities versus a Yone gets eaten alive. So just know that, have your cooldowns up, play reactionary post six, but pre six, just save your charm for his Q3 and you'll be good to go. Next up, we have Zed. Zed does a ton of damage in short bursts when he throws his shadow out and then EQs you. What you need to do in this lane is stay about a Teemo or two out of the range of his W so that if he does throw his W out, he can't hit you with the E, which slows you, and then a Q, which guarantees a ton of damage. You wanna use your range to your advantage. However, if you find that you end up getting chunked out, you will be able to use your E if he jumps onto you with his W. The biggest thing I can say, honestly, is your ultimate is gonna save your life along as, as well as your E, your charm, if you listen. He is going to use his ult at level six. The first thing you wanna do is immediately charm backwards. I mean, like if he's ulting you, you wanna use your charm towards your turret or your base because that is where he lands. He lands behind the target when he uses his ult. That is going to immediately give you time to get some gap on him. Now, he whether he has W or not, he is gonna try and use his Q onto you. Um, and you can use your ult to go to the side. If he uses his W and his ult, and he has his own body, and he hits you with three Qs, because both of the shadows will throw a Q out. That will destroy your HP bar, and having your ult on top will just make you take more damage once that pops. So using your ultimate to dodge uh, his abilities as well as your W is going to make you win the lane. I will say this lane is incredibly difficult to kill post six, but it's easy to get farmed. What I would recommend, uh, and I don't think many other people would recommend this, is getting an early Seeker's Arm Guard into Azonia's after your first lost chapter. I think that Azonia's is the most overpowered item in the game against Zed because he will never do damage to you with the end of his ultimate, the part that pops. You can literally cheat the game. It is so broken. Um, but obviously you want that lost chapter first for the mana. You might even want to just complete your first item. Malignance is very strong. So maybe just get Zonia's second, depending on how hard you lose the lane. If this guy, if the Zed is owning you, if he's a smurf, if he just can't seem to get it right, you can definitely go Lost Chapter into Zonia's, and that is a bit safer. You're not gonna carry as hard, but hey, you'll be able to farm up. You'll be way better off than if you go zero and 10. Next up, we have Ziggs. Ziggs is going to try to throw bombs at you, bounce them through minions, bounce them over minions and try to poke you slowly but surely. It's not hard to dodge it. Uh, just stay max range. When he throws it, when he throws it at you, move away. <laughs> it sounds so uh, difficult and it's so easy. Um, on top of that, it really is just gonna be a case where neither person is really gonna wanna get close to the other because if Ziggs runs up to you, try and auto tank you, you can just auto W Q the Ziggs. If you run up to try and auto W auto Ziggs, Ziggs will hit you with an auto Q 
the lane is essentially two things. It's either a farm lane or it's a try to outplay because you think you can get into his brain and just outmaneuver him. Both strategies are equally good. Ziggs has a ton of range though. So if he has any form of difficulty dealing with you, he'll just stand back and uh, and good luck killing him because he's just gonna have all the range in the world to throw his bombs out and farm minions from uh, from his turret. Um, so but after that, the only real thing I could say about level six is, you know how it goes. Ari can dash right out of Zig's ultimate, which is so good. Um, so just do that. It's most likely going to be a farm lane. And then once you get into the team fights and the objectives, you can easily, once he's not under his turret, you can ult on top of him and just hit him with the charm. And he is, he's very immobile. He has his W, but that's, you know, you have three dashes and a movement speed boost and a charm. Like he doesn't have that much mobility. You should be able to destroy him, just bum rush him, um, depending on the situation. Next up, we have Zillion. Zillion is going to want to throw Qs on you if you're in range. So you shouldn't be in range to hit by Zillion's Q. It's not that much range. It's pretty decent, but it's not incredible. Or more likely, he is going to throw a minion, uh, his bomb on a minion that is low health next to you. And then he is going to get a throw another bomb on top of that one, which will pop the first bomb uh, because it's a second bomb on top of it. And that first bomb popping will kill the minion. So it essentially it'll double bomb you very and do a ton of damage if you're in range of it. Stay away from minions of your own that are low health that you're so don't be next to them. And other than that, he doesn't do that much poke. So when his Q is down, if he uses it to farm, you have plenty of opportunity to hit him with all of the combos we talked about in the guide. You have plenty of opportunity to chunk him out and do lots and lots of things to him. Um, and last but not least, we have Zoe. Zoe can be a bit of a nightmare but as Ari, post six, you are very able to ult away from her bubble. Zoe can throw a bubble that will extend if she throws it through terrain, like walls and whatnot. The distance, the distance will extend actually. So try to stay out of fog of war places you think she might be able to hit you with the bubble. Because if she hits you with the long range bubble and then a Q, she's gonna chunk you to half, and then she'll be able to easily wait for her cooldowns to come back up and then just finish you off with a flash. Um, the way you beat Zoe is by not getting hit by a bubble. Standing behind minions, her Q as well has a pretty okay splash range. If she Qs a minion and you're right on top of it, you'll get hurt as well. Stand a little bit behind the minions. Um, if she uses her bubble and she misses it or if you have a minion in front of you so she can't hit you with the bubble, you can. she doesn't have that much range on her autos to farm with, so you can easily just auto W auto her uh, as long as you have some kind of minion that body blocks uh, her bubble. Her Q is not a big deal. It's when she hits you with a bubble and then she can wind up a long, long range Q and then auto you and then proc electric Q. That's when things get really tricky. Oh my God, that was the last one. Let's go.